Wait, they're they're saying it on air, right, Zach? No, people know. People know. It's my understanding. When you're lost in the magic of a kiss, her lips are much too close to mine. Be my foolish heart. But if our eager lips combine, then let the fire start. Yeah. Oh. This time, it isn't fascination. I hate when you do that. Oh, it hurts. Like, it hurts. Yeah. You, you hit me on the shoulder as hard as you can. Yeah, that's it, not as hard as I can. Well, like, as hard as you like would as a sporting way. So yeah, everything we say, people are gonna hear. So <laughs> <laughs> they're recording this now. Uh, no, but I just mean like, you know, yeah, we gotta keep the <laughs> the bad puns at a minimum. No can do, nut. <laughs> Mine's not on. I don't think. It's on. No, I don't think so. I I hear it. It's just on lower. Trust me, it's like coming in my headphones. Hmm. Hmm. Are you coming in on your headphones? Uh huh. You are? Yeah, 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 I can hear it. It's just, yeah, it's a little quieter than it was. Yeah. Which is good. It's just, you know, you just gotta like listen carefully sometimes. Getting nervous, dude. Like excited, but nervous. Yeah, in the same way, like a milder version of how I felt before my recital. Yeah. Yeah, good thing we're like. Experienced performers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like for so many people, this would just be a nightmare. Really? Don't you think? Like having to like get up and like commentate. Yeah, I it's guess. Like they would no. Some people would never want to do that. Like some people wouldn't. I mean, obviously, some people would never want to be performing arts. Yeah. You know. By the way, your tea will get slightly colder if you leave it open. Oh, thank you. I didn't know if that was intentional. No, it's not. Going live soon. Oh, yeah, they can hear us already. Oh, they can? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that happened. Oh, it's okay. One of my friends just texted me, like, haha, I hear you're live. Yeah, <laughs> I can hear everything you say. It, it will mildly, oh, yeah, yeah, likely. This will, will. will this be on, like, when you put it up, what you're hearing now, be on? No, but I'm saying when it's, like, put up, like, after the fact, like, will right now be on there? Cool. <laughs> but for the, yeah. Cool. It's okay. That's, you know, one of the first things you learn in this business. <laughs> Yeah. What happens? This part's in included? <laughs> this part's included. Okay. <laughs> so. I guess this is like the part where we're supposed to be shoving around joyfully <laughs> in anticipation of the game. Yeah. Well, here we are. Well, no, it doesn't give it like 30 seconds. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's going to be a huge, like, influx of people right at um, the zero second mark. Okay. So. I'm going to give you a count. Downs.
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello and welcome to Poker on Air. Uh, my name is Zach Resnick. I'm Jack Lasky. Uh, we're super excited to be guest hosting tonight. Uh, I'll let Zach uh, talk about what's so special about this game that's about to happen. Yeah, so tonight it's going to be a game of primarily Oberlin College students, most of whom just finished my course on an introduction to No Limit Hold'em strategy. So um, this is kind of their first real, real poker game for money. We've played a few times intermittently throughout the semester with some of the class, but it's going to be real special getting most of the class together, kind of use everything they've learned, and uh, yeah, it should, be, it should be a fun time. Yeah, so it should be an interesting game. Some some moments of uh of young brilliance and uh, maybe some moments of youthful error. Yeah. So without further ado, let's introduce uh, the players tonight. Um, in seat one, one we have India Roland. Uh, she is a voice major in the conservatory and uh, very studious student. <laughs> <laughs> Then we got we got Ben Libby in seat two, politics major, you know, like likes the poker. Uh, and then seat three, Jack, you could actually introduce. Oh yeah, this is a uh, I've known Ari for a long time. Uh, Ari is a jazz bass and mathematics major at Oberlin. Uh, he and I used to go to high school together, and I had uh, was his teacher for a while uh, for for music. Uh, he is not not in the poker class. Uh, same with the next person, Orion, seat four. He uh, is a jazz drummer who is just a poker enthusiast who wanted to come out for tonight. Unfortunately, some of the class couldn't make it due to uh, performance requirements for their for their major. Uh, seat five, we got Sam. Uh, he's a freshman from Texas and has already had a tournament win under his his belt, I think, for a few thousand dollars, so he's, he's no stranger to playing for high stakes. Uh, Want to introduce the next? Yeah, sure. The next next we have uh, Russell Gelman Sheehan, better known uh, as Russ G. Uh, Russell is a guitar and economics major, and he's sort of the prototypical life of the party. So, you know, we, we can expect a lot of action and a lot of laughs from Russell tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like those those have already begun. Um, then we got seat seven, Oliver Bach. He's a news editor for the Oberlin Review, Oberlin's uh, main newspaper. And then seat eight, we got a you know regular on the show and a good friend of mine, poker player and lawyer, based in Cleveland. We got Dave Mills. Mm -hmm. Fresh off a big case. So yeah. So He's Cantor Park 48. You asked the stakes. We're actually starting with two cent, five cent. Uh, and then might be bumping it up all the way to five cent, ten cent later. Uh, in terms of stack sizes, most people bought in for ten, but we got Sam that bought in for twelve, and uh, Russ and Dave that bought in for fifteen. So we're we're all at least a hundred big blinds deep here. Um, yeah, this is one of the smallest uh, big blind to cost of education <laughs> games you'll find in the country. Maybe maybe the most, in fact, that might be our claim to fame. Mm -hmm. All right, so it looks like the action is unfolding. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe somewhat slowly. I think <laughs> they're they're learning the uh, learning the table. Yeah, everyone looks pretty focused. It's a good sign. Okay, looks like we have some action. Um, so some of you have probably seen Zach play on the show. You know his aggressive style. So. Let's see if his students follow suit. Uh, I know part of the course was the rebetting in position, so we can probably expect a fair amount of that. Let's see. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Ari's all in. <laughs> let the screen come together. So Russell folded. So we have two people that missed the flop. Uh, so let, let's see what happens. Oh, Ben is actually in the hand. We do not know what his cards are. Orion's kind of just going for it, establishing himself as a, you know, maybe an early table captain, has a presence not to be messed with. <laughs> I'm sure the intent is something along those lines. 
we see a call from Orion. I think I think we saw it checked to Orion in two calls, but un unclear for now. Uh, I think we've seen some chips go into the pot. Uh, that is it's true. It's hard to say what I don't know exactly what Ben did. Uh, all right, so Ben's leading out here now. You know. It's like Ari folded and Orion folded. <laughs> Unclear what Ben had, but you know he took down the pot. Ben in the past has played generally has been one of the more tighter players, one of the more kind of straightforward, tight aggressive players in the class. So I would be not surprised if he has a pair of aces or better there. Yeah, I mean, with that description, the fact he's c betting uh, into two people and then you know continuing on the turn. His, his range is likely to be pretty strong there, unless he knows something yeah. about, uh, I think, was it Orion who saw the turn? I'm guessing. Yeah. He's never played with Orion. Uh, or Ari. Yeah, or Ari. That's true. So, you know, c betting into two unknowns. All right, let's see if we can get a complete picture of the hand this time. Yeah. So it looks like everyone's getting the mechanics of the game down there, mucking the cards into the correct area, putting their cards in the, the right spot so it gets picked up by the RFID reader. I know that was harder than expected for me at first. Mm -hmm. So used to casually folding. Yeah. So it looks like it's folded to Ben on the button. Ace-5 offsuit. Yeah, kind, of a, kind of a standard race there, Ben. But, uh, you know. Yeah, still a little unclear what the action is, but I'm sure that will be fixed pretty soon. Yeah, so so we see Russell on his phone. Not yeah. not something that is encouraged on this show. Um, but okay, I, I, it looks like we've got a better picture of the action now. Yeah. Oh. Right, so Ari opened the pot. Uh, Ryan calls. Blind versus blind. Okay, expect to see a Ryan bet here. Yeah. He bets rather quickly. Uh, it looked mm. to be somewhat small. Uh, you bet right. 25 and a 30, you know, a kind of big bet. Uh, so, yeah, Orion betting top pair one check, too, trying to get some value. Mm. Ari made a discipline check fold there. I don't know, I think that's a fine spot to see bet, fine spot to check fold. It's blind versus blind, people's ranges are really wide. I'm, I'm usually inclined to kind of go for a, a one and done there with 8 7 suited with no equity. Uh, yeah, but either way is fine. You know, it's early on in the session. Mm. Ne never played with each other before, but just the way Ari's handling his chips and doing everything, you know, fold him the small blind, and he's opting to raise versus just uh, just call it's there. It's a limp. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, that's a big sign of an amateur. Or I mean, obviously these are all amateurs, but a big sign of an inexperienced player is someone who, you know, has, or maybe not even an inexperienced player, but uh, <laughs> not a thinking player is someone who has sort of. Automatic limp spots, whether it's you know some sort of notion of courtesy or just uh, a lack of comfort. Yeah. So we see India raised a ten here. Um, you know, in late position with sevens, it's good raise. I know in class we always kind of talked about the three x raise pre flop or the three x re raise if you're three betting as like a good default, and then maybe going a little bit smaller or bigger based on you know different dynamics. So. Curious to see why India would go. So for India that flops a set. Let's see. Uh, she looks like she's back. checking. She's looking. Oh. She's telling a nice story. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, so she underbets. Yeah, she goes. For, she goes for the check back min raise there. Um. Nope. Sam calls with his gut shot. Sam's an action player. He he likes to go for it. Hmm. Um, to limp call a lot of hands, like to see see a lot of pots. What? <laughs> Did India check back the river there? <laughs> yeah. So that's <laughs> well. Yeah, you'll have to address that <laughs> maybe next semester. Yeah, that's that's not really a check back there. <laughs> well, pot taken down regardless. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, first time playing on TV, of course, uh, one of the first times playing at all, you know, 
it's we all know how easy it is to check. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot easier uh, to know something theoretically than to put it into practice. I know that was an issue we had a lot in class. We'd have, you know, me explain a concept. People really seem to get it, be able to articulate why it makes sense, and then we play, and then it all goes out the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, that's just a basic uh, misunderstanding of hand strength. But you know, those those misunderstandings continue through much more experienced players. Uh, you know, often in the other direction, really. Yeah. So I think we heard, overheard India's mic. Like, I just hope he's proud of me. Uh, so David picks up kings. Oh, wow. Yep. Makes a standard makes a raise. Full. Yeah. All right. Let, let it go. Oh, Dave might be disappointed here. Oh, it does not. Oh, Russell. Russell's in the big blind. <gasps> oh. Russell. Uh, oh, Dave. Dave look to see the disappointment. Uh, yeah. It does not show it. Good good discipline not show, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> it's always tempting to just, you know, want everyone to share in your misery when you know, folds around um, on your monsters. Yeah. And you're not really giving anything away. Yeah, so we, we see the tables talking about Donald Sorry, Trump making a lot of physical physical gestures. Seems like they're having a fun time. Uh, I see Blind Ref is wondering what this is. <laughs> this is a – so my uh, co-commentator, Zach Resnick, teaches a poker class at Oberlin College. Uh, and as the part of the final, the class has to play on Poker on Air and then later uh, assess how well they played. And uh, I don't know, Zach, do they have to write a, write a report? or? Yeah, they just have to talk about hands they th think they played relatively well and hands they played relatively poorly and talk about why and integrate you know, the concepts we talked about in class. So some of those things being you know, relative hand strength, uh, you know, thinly value betting, bet sizing, uh, assessing your opponent's range and, you know, acting correctly after that, kind of just the, the basics of playing No Limit Texas Hold'em. For those interested, um, there's a copy of the syllabus that's publicly available. You could find that at uh, justhandspoker.com uh, and then go to the coaching tab and there you could find the, the syllabus. That's the actually the new site that uh, my co-commentator and I just launched uh, for our coaching in the Cleveland area and our new podcast where we deconstruct a hand of live poker every week and just kind of approach a hand analysis from every angle. Yeah, so this is going to be an interesting game because, you know, we have a range of experiences prior to the class, uh, but they've all, I mean, a couple of the players are actually not in the class. Uh, Dave, who you might have seen on the show, is obviously not a student at Oakland College. Uh, but also, some we're going to see a bunch of players who have been exposed to some high-level thought about the game, but you know, haven't had enough time to properly uh, one from a theoretical standpoint really digest it all, and also uh, from an experience standpoint, put it into practice enough for it to be second nature. So yeah, so here here we see Orion make a standard raise with jacks. And Russell probably make a little bit too loose of a call in position with a 10-7 suited. Um, Russell likes to see a lot of a lot of flops being a lot of pots. He definitely knows when to make the proper lay down. Not just going to get out of line just because when he misses. Um, so he made a nice quick discipline fold there. A plus Russ. You can hear in the background uh, a little bit of discussion about, you know, a little teacher talk. <laughs> I asked them earlier if they'd like to use a teacher, and, you know, it was a little awkward. No one said anything. So you might have to work on your classroom etiquette a little bit. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> that is true. India astutely points out that we can hear them. Yeah. Uh, I wish she hadn't. You know, I'd love to hear the unsolicited thoughts on Zach Resnick. Yeah, I don't know if I'd like to hear that personally, but yeah. well, to be honest, I hear it quite often. But. Yeah. 
not often in your presence. Cool. So we see, we see Ari from relatively early position, raising it with Queen Ten offsuit. Again, just signs that he's like a fairly competent player. Maybe feels comfortable doing stuff there. Okay. So now, good Oliver. We see the we see the three bet in position. It's a little small sizing wise, uh, but you know he sees that we see a raise and a two calls and knows that there's a lot of dead money there and Is thinks that, you know... India going to pull out a four bet? Or India decides mm. to call? Yeah. Um, Don't love the, the just call there. Yeah. But I now agree. we're going to see a bunch I, of calls. Correct call from Orion there. We're probably going to see... Mm -hmm. Oh, a discipline fold by Russ. Good for him. I yeah. don't love the call from Ari. Oh, no, it's not... not I don't love there. the raise either of the open. I think it's... A little thin. He's not in the class, so he doesn't know people's styles as well. Yeah, wow. Uh, this is a good flop. Yeah, so India flops another set. <laughs> and Ari has flopped a open-ended, and Oliver has top pair. So let's see. India decides to <laughs> lead out. <laughs> Hopefully she won't. Oh, uh, and yeah, Ari has the Well, the strength of her hand. It was, you know, it's a good call from Ari. It's an interesting spot Oliver, for Oliver, yeah. yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he lets it go. Uh, I... I think having seen India check back a set on the river, you would be a little bit hesitant about calling a donk bet from her. Yeah. But does he raise? It looks like he raises, he raises to, to 200 Or hmm. to $2. Well, I'd, I definitely don't like that play. I mean, yeah. it's just... You're never, getting called, of, yeah, you're never getting called by worse. You're never getting called by worse. Oh, wow. <laughs> but you, you We're going to have to... <laughs> It worked. <laughs> Could fold out middle set, so. Yeah. Hmm. He, well, has, Zach, he has the blockers, the top set. So. <laughs> I guess that's true. Uh, yeah, I hope well, maybe, that... maybe you pull India to the side and uh, <laughs> give her a talk in the back. That sets in their, their relative strength in the game of Texas Hold'em. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not a hand you're pulling. That's yeah. Points off. Oh well. It's okay. More to analyze for the final. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're asking for a sign. Um, yeah. I, if India's reaching out to the poker gods right now, then I I think she's already got her answer and decided to muck it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So in. Dealing if uh, regular poker on air viewers, we have Trevor. So he's normally in the booth here, but he's been nice enough to come in and deal for us tonight while we uh, give our commentating a shot. So mm -hmm. shout out to Trevor for yeah, thank you, Trevor. Yeah, making this possible. Doing our best to make you proud. So we got Orion, you know, calling with King Five offsuit, and Dave isolating with King Seven off on the button. I like the raise. Pretty standard play. We're gonna see. We're gonna see the limp call with Orion. Again, just yeah. a, a bad hand doesn't flop well. A lot of reverse implied odds. You know, not a not a winning play. They both miss. So let's see who wins this game. <laughs> Chicken. Laughter. <laughs> it's a strong sign. <laughs> Dave checks back. Yeah. I guess he. Yeah, I he mean, he's never played with him. That could mean just like he hit something and is an experience. So I don't mind the check back because if Orion is limp calling as wide as King 5 offsuit, James King High could be good a percentage of the time. Yeah, that's what I'm. I mean, I'm thinking if for Dave, you might feel that since you don't have. I don't know if I like the check back from Dave. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that's what he's thinking. I, I think it's. I think it's close. Uh, I think, you know, when you're playing with very inexperienced players and kind of do weird stuff like see the flop and laugh, uh, it kind of just throws you for a loop. But I think sometimes you just have to disregard it and be like, okay, we have a great C betting uh, flop for, and it's it's difficult for him to to call a bet there with a lot of his hands. So I think it's kind of a clear bet. Yeah, I agree. I guess one train of one line of thought that Dave might have been taking is that if this if this guy's really inexperienced and he doesn't have anything, uh, 
you know, checking two streets is going to be probably a clear sign of not having anything. Checking one street, you know, it could be uh, deference to the preflop raiser, and it could be some form of slow playing. Yeah, so uh, the delayed C bet, not a, not necessarily a bad move there. But I still, with that hand, you know, with with very little chance to improve, mm -hmm. uh, I I prefer the C bet. Yeah, so we see India with another pocket pair running really well tonight. Uh, we see Russ raise the queen six suit in early position. I think some some part of him knows that that's <laughs> that's not really the thing to do. We see some standard calls with the fours and threes, and Ari completing the action of the big blind with jack eight again out of position doesn't flop particularly well. Hard hand to play. India flops. Up once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's see if she gets to the river this time. Checked all around. Oh, we have a six. Action. Well, <laughs> let's see if you know this will be sort of telling about Russ's uh, strategy. Does he bet here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we actually rigged the deck tonight for India to flop sets in full houses. <laughs> Checked around again. Okay. Let's see if she checks back. Three streets. Okay, Ari, Ari just going for it here. Okay. Really should be raising this, India. I believe in you. Oh, oh wow. No. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at India's reaction. <laughs> The error in her ways, I think, might be dawning on her, but <laughs> I hope her so. reaction is, is very uh, <laughs> subdued. Subdued. Yeah. So we see Russell climbing up top there with the hero call. Yeah, Scotty Mofo, it's... Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a little tragic so far. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you been yeah. running it all, all semester? Yeah. You know, the ones don't pay attention to class. Like he'll go to. What do you say? You sign up for this. He was crushing full till at the age of ten, right? <laughs> are you talking about you? Yeah. Yeah. Zach's uh, early early life online exploits are well known. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he was uh, I guess unable to pass on his precociousness to all of his students. <laughs> so JPM, this yes, is this not is, poker. This at is not poker at its best. <laughs> Accurate uh, statement. But you can't look away, Scotty. So <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah, we hope the play gets better. I mean, in class, the way it works is we'll, we'll play kind of with extra credit points as the incentives. And then I ran a few kind of micro stakes games at my house just kind of for practice. But what happens after each hand, I'll usually kind of – we'll do a little analysis and I ask them to explain what they thought and everything. And uh, <laughs> And – so, you know, usually after each hand, but I give in the explanation that that usually helps kind of reinforce the things where now it's we're kind of just going off on whatever. So, yeah, and a lot, I mean, a lot of the mistakes that have been made are the kind that uh, eliminate action rather than provide it, unfortunately. Yeah, but I am, I am not worried that there will not be some good action tonight the way some past games have gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, President Kanye. Asked if the girl has missed some classes. <laughs> uh, no, she's actually been to pretty much all the classes, uh, and most of the students have too, which has been good. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's hard to go from zero with no poker experience to, to understanding all the concepts uh, in such a short period of time, especially when everyone has so much other stuff going on. You know, I'd hope mm. that you know those the, those kinds of folds would would be eliminated by the end of the class, but uh, you know. They're trying. They came all the way out here to Akron to play. So let's let's give them a little bit of slack for this. All right, and this first another, part. another nice hand. Yeah. Well, it's altogether possible that uh, I mean, India's pre-flop play has been fine. Oh yeah. well, she did miss one. Yeah. You know, prob uh, Pretty clear four bet with the small sizing and position there. Yeah, but you know, a four bet you can always. It, you can excuse a young player for not forbidding uh, much more so than you can for making some of the folds she has on later streets. Of course, of course, yeah. 
but this, at the same time, it is something. Those four bits are something we talked about in class. So, so we see the flop check through. Uh, Sam now has the straight. Uh, Orion's kind of going for it, picking a really bad card to bluff at. <laughs> uh, we have India with top pair. This should be an easy laydown, but you never know. Well, so okay, Sam, so Sam, Sam goes for the Sam call. Sam goes for the call. Now I can see India calling here <laughs> because I mean, well, having. S you know, just lay down a, a flap full house to see <laughs> really two total junk hands. Yeah. Uh, I, I could definitely see her, you know, feeling like maybe everyone doesn't have <laughs> quads every time. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe the top here is good. I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't like the call. <laughs> there, there have, you know, been many worse made at this table so far. Yeah. So we're kind of seeing, again, a, a pretty suicidal bluff by Orion. Um, I like I like the calls by Sam. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so it looks like India showed her hand after, uh, after calling. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely someone talked about not doing to not give your opponents information about how you play those hands uh, you know there's never really need to do that kind of the one exception I like to make is if you're playing with someone that is likely to leave soon and you think that if you tilt them they'll start playing a lot worse maybe you show them a bluff or something but uh, generally mm -hmm. you should just really are on the side of not playing that meta game and playing that mind game and just you know, not give players that are perceptive enough to use that information well yeah, so just to catch up a couple people in the chat, uh, today's game is a micro-stakes game. The participants are students of my co-commentator, Zach. Uh, he's teaching a poker class at Oberlin College. Uh, meets once a week, so they've all gone through about 10 hours of poker training uh, with you know pretty limited live experience. Uh, I mean, that's not true for all the students. There are... 20, 24 hours, Jack. Oh, 24 hours. I'm yeah, sorry. Two hour class, 12 of them. Anyway, so they're all in for somewhere between uh, 10 and 15 bucks, and uh, we're playing two five cent. Yeah, so the just divide divide the stacks by 100. Yeah, as we mentioned uh, earlier, this is probably the highest college education to uh, big blind. Cost of college education to big blind ratio of any uh, cash game currently operating in the United States. Maybe even the world. Yes. So we see... Okay, Russ trying to pick on the limpers. Sensing weakness. But Sam is not one to limp fold. He is a habitual limp caller. Uh, and 10-7 suited out position is not going to be an exception to that. So flop, Russ flops middle pair. He's going to go for some value. Uh, Sam, you know, when Sam really misses, he, he'll make the lay down. He's, he's pretty loose pre-flop, but he'll, he's not going to make any, like, kind of stupid light calls or kind of suicidal bluffs post-flop, but he is de definitely capable of the, the big bluff. He, he has by far the most real money experience of anyone in the class. Um, he's a freshman, but, but before beginning his college education, already won a multi-thousand dollar tournament back in Dallas, Texas, where he's from, and has played cash games there a few times. Uh, Ryan, to answer your question, I'm not totally sure why it says 510 currently, uh, but we were, you know, as stacks grow, because, you know, we're playing micro stakes and, you know, everyone's prepared to rebuy, we might up the stakes later on. Uh, and keep in mind that you know, knowing a lot of college students, this this is meaningful money to them. Yeah. Uh, this is the difference between you know, 140 on the weekend and 240s on the weekend. So, yeah. Yeah. Stakes are real. Yeah. So it's, it's always an interesting dynamic in class because uh, Russell is actually a housemate of mine. Um, so I think there's an old adage that you should never try to teach teach your friends, and it's there's definitely some some merit to that 
to that statement. Mm -hmm. Finds himself yourself in a few tricky situations when when that comes up, but at the same time, it's been a pleasure to to have him and now having someone that could maybe sometimes come to the horseshoe horseshoe with me. Yeah, it's tough to fail your friends. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. but Russ deserves it. He put a lot of work into the midterm. You know, def definitely works hard and likes poker. So I'm glad it's worked out for him. Mm -hmm. What I've been noticing so far is just like the truth that. It's really difficult to put poker concepts into your game. Yeah. And you know, all these all these guys, I'm sure, once once you go back over this with them and point out their mistakes, they're gonna understand the fundamentals of why they're wrong. But it's just a whole other thing that when you're when you're actually playing, you know, one to have the discipline to make the types of plays uh, that you're supposed to, and you know, find enjoyment in the game by just being engaged. Uh, without feeling like you need to play. And then also having the conviction to uh, make the plays that you know are plus EV in the long run and yeah. not let uh, short-term results get in the way. Yeah, so we see uh, it checked around on the flop and the top pair paired, and it's checked to Ben Libby, and he makes a sizable bet and plays to him his relatively tight image and takes down the pot. I'm not sure I love the play in that spot, just because four-way pot, uh, a lot of passive play, so most people probably aren't betting a five or a six for protection or for value, and they're likely going to call the turn there. Um, so don't necessarily love the play, but uh, maybe he sensed, sensed some weakness, picked up on a live tail that we couldn't get here in the booth, and he won the pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always tough. You know, sometimes you're playing against opponents who do things and they don't really make any sense. And sometimes it's not even, not that this is necessarily a case of that, but I think often it's a futile exercise to try and rationalize certain decisions you see made at the po poker table. Of course, you should try, because uh, if you can get any insight you can gain on your opponents, it's valuable. But some things you just have to chalk up to not thinking and just, you know, playing by feel. Mm -hmm. And it's it's something you want to see in an opponent, of course. Yeah. So we see Ari calling with the ace queen suited here. Again, this is a it's a clear raise. You're mm -hmm. at kind of the top of your pre flop range and you want to build up the pot. Uh, see what Russ is going to do here. Yeah, having having seen Ari open with weaker hands, I wonder if this is some sort of slow play. Uh, I think that I mean obviously that's incorrect. You would want you're ahead of you know a lot of the calling range, uh, especially at this table, mm -hmm. and you want to start building the pot. Hmm. Okay, so we got an open-ended straight draw versus top pair. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are two players that we should see some chips move. Uh, all right, Ari leads out for almost a pot-sized bet. Russell shouldn't be going anywhere. Let's see if he opts to call. Yeah. I'm not surprised for Russell. Uh, Oh. Okay, so let's see what Ari, Ari should continue to bet, but let's see. Okay, he does. A, a, a smaller bet relative to the size of the pot. Uh, he probably doesn't necessarily feel that way uh, since it's double the bet he just made, but you know, obviously the pot triples when you make a pot size bet that gets called. Yeah, so Russell makes a good lay down there. I think he correctly realizes that when Ari donks there and continues betting on the queen, uh, he just likely has a queen or has a hand he's he really likes, and with no fold equity, it's uh, not going to be profitable to call that draw there, and he lays it down. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think we're finding out now that the, the phones are a no-go. We wouldn't want people cheating the game and running away with tens of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have uh, almost enough for uh, 100 big blinds over. Oh, no, not anywhere near close, actually. <laughs> yeah. Especially now that it's 1-3. Uh, luckily, I'll say. So it looks like every single person had their phone. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now we're phoneless. All right, so maybe we'll see the action pick up now that people don't have as much to do when they're not in the hand. Yeah. 
So talk to us in the chat. Uh, for anyone who, you know, maybe is relatively new to poker or who remembers what it was like, how how do you think people are doing for, uh, kind of their first first real game? Um, you know, it's easy as as the teacher to be pretty hard on them because, you know, almost all the mistakes I'm seeing in some sense we've talked about in class. But again, like Jack has touched upon, uh, integrating the concepts we talk about um, correctly is you know takes a really long time and it's a never ending process. So we see India yeah. fold the big blind when it's checked to her. Yeah. Very tight play. <laughs> Watch there be like two nines and no nine. Good Saxon now. Okay. Unfortunately no. Yeah. So she goes for the So this is a leading the lead out fold. Yeah. Who who bets perhaps a who bets first uh, situation? Thirty, the seventeen. Yeah, and again, Ari, even if even if he thinks he might be good, it's just with all the clubs and being out of position. There's just a lot better bluff catchers there and better better spots to pick against a guy like Orion. Mm -hmm. As far as Orion sizing, I, I think it's too big. Uh, I don't. I don't hate a large C bet, uh, or a bet to steal. I guess it's not it's not a necessarily a continuation bet, yeah. but uh, almost doubling the pot is just you know you, you there's almost no situation where you should feel like uh, that's the correct odds to give someone uh, when you're stealing. Yeah, again, there could be dynamics uh, if you're kind of two high level players and you have some history where it's good to throw in over bets there, but both of them have never played with each other. And uh, especially when you have no real equity, the way Orion did, he doesn't have a club. He has eight, nine on a king, three, six, three club board. That's kind of a one and done, maybe near to pot size bet for me. So Dave makes it 20 on the button. Uh, we see Ben flat in the big blind and Ari call, uh, looks like limp call into the gun. Again, this is a uh, kind of the first deviation from what looked like some decent, uh, you know, kind of ABC poker from Ari. Um, we see Ben up for the call on the big blind. Uh, I think it could definitely go for go for a three bet there. You know, Dave is going to be opening very wide there, and Ace Jack suited is just way ahead against their range. And you know, when when you both miss, it's kind of tough. So Dave bets for protection and. Uh, to get some value from draws, and they both completely miss, and everyone folds. <laughs> so, uh, CXCK Roach24 uh, is asking why would we air a 2 5 penny game? So, uh, we're airing this game because while these stakes are, you know, 100 times or 50 times smaller than the stakes that would normally be on poker on air or that would like be played at a casino. Uh, these are stakes that are meaningful for many, if not all of the students there. Uh, all these students are in college, uh, whereas Jack aptly pointed out before, the difference between a win and loss in this game is, you know, 140 and, and 240s for the weekend. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is a part of a limited beer budget for these students. Uh, but more so than that, this is more for them about getting the experience uh, of playing live, and it's a, you know, not only is it really a fun situation for them to gain that experience, but it's also going to be a really valuable teaching tool to have a, pretty much a complete hand history for every student, uh, along with video, so that you can not only go back and look at what decisions you made on a purely sort of uh, bet sizing. Uh, dynamic but also you know looking back at some of the physical tells uh that not only are you giving off uh but that you may have missed in your opponents yeah so here here we see uh oliver kind of raise russell's very weak limp to 25 i think it was a good kind of 4x plus the limp raise he really identifies that russ is is very much raising all of his strong hands and limping all of his weaker hands so it's a good Good spot to raise up in position with the king-jack offsuit. Now, Oliver flops 
very good C betting hand. It's a flop that heavily favors the pre-flop raiser, and he has a gut shot to the nuts. Uh, we see Dave call in position there. They're both fairly deep, and I think it could go either way with a three bet or a call. Don't mind the call pre. I don't think Dave's going away here with his backdoor flush position and gut shot. No, I definitely don't think so. Uh, and nor should he. Yeah. And yeah, cockroach 24, so just d divide the, the numbers by uh, by 100. <laughs> and if you lose your money, do you get an F in the class? No. Uh, I'm not going to grade them on how they played this final, because unfortunately some of the students in the class couldn't make it. But they're going to analyze their player if a student couldn't make it, analyze someone who did play. Uh, play and I'm going to grade them based on their analysis. And uh, that's the final for the class. And also, it would be it wouldn't be a good poker grading system, of course, to to grade by how well you did, uh, you know, on a monetary basis. Yeah, there's a lot of short-term variance involved. Uh, okay, so Oliver goes for the double barrel here. I like the instinct, but it's definitely too small of a sizing, I think, to work against a lot of Dave's <laughs> flop calling range, and especially with Dave picking up the backdoor flush draw there. Um, he's never going away. So now we see, you know. Two low cards again. Is Oliver going to go for the triple barrel? Mm, uh, I, I feel I feel he's not. I think it's this is a tough spot if you're an inexperienced player to uh, triple barrel, you know, into someone uh, who you don't know. In this case, someone that you know you know is a <laughs> maybe perhaps more experienced player than you, uh, an older player. So he's. I mean, I, I like to see him deliberating here. Uh, yeah, you know, and I don't, I don't know. I also don't think that a check here is wrong. Uh, <laughs> no, I think it's definitely close. You know, I, I know Dave as a player. Um, it, those look like finger or chip crabbing fingers right there. Yeah, but I mean, either way, whatever Oliver does, I like the fact that he really deliberated on each street. And while I don't love the sizing on the turn, I, I like that he identified. Uh, that this could be a potential triple barrel. I thought you might say that river bluffer. I don't know, just something about you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he offs the check. Wow. So this will be hilarious if it goes check check. I I doubt Dave. I don't is. think Dave would check back. I, yeah. And I I like the timing of this. Yeah. yeah. Good play by Dave. Yeah. So Oliver is going to be sorely disappointed when he finds out that would have been a chop pot. But either way, well played, Oliver. Uh, but definitely, the way he gave up is is something that I would not advise. He kind of looked a little frustrated, and then is like about to bend. It's like, ah, oh, I check. So yeah, that kind of scream weakness, and Dave correctly pounced on it. And I mean, that is that is something to consider as sort of a, a reverse tell if you uh, incorporate that kind of thing into your game. But again, I, I think. I don't advise students or really, I mean, students in the class or private students in Cleveland or really anyone to integrate uh, reverse tells into their game. It's very hard to manage, and especially if you're going to play with these type of people regularly, uh, and then they know that you're capable of reverse tells, they're just going to disregard a lot of what you do. So it really only works against people that you think are capable of recognizing common poker tells and acting on that information and that you're not going to play with again for a while or ever again. So um, on the whole, it's better, I think, to just try to be consistent throughout all your actions. Yeah, I agree. And I, There's so much of an edge to be gained by just understanding the strategy uh, and doing, you know, an, analyzing ranges on your own, uh, going through decision trees, that it's, it's likely if you're... Uh, you know, a serious player, you're likely to have much more of an edge is, and from a strategic perspective than from a physical perspective, unless it's something that you've really worked on. And, you know, you, you might overestimate your ability to sell a fake tell. You might actually come off, you know, selling the opposite of what you meant to. Yeah, that would be the worst feeling. You, you make the play that would normally work, and then you try to do a reverse tell on it. <laughs> so we've got an interesting hand here. Uh, two top pair hands. I... I don't know if I like the bet from. I mean, honestly, oh. I, I haven't been super engaged in the hand. I think the, I think the bet's 
pretty uh, pretty standard from, from yeah. Ari. Yeah, I, I agree, actually. Getting with value the from draws and, uh, you know, straight draws, flush draws, worse aces. Um, I definitely I don't like Ben's check back on the flop. It's checked him in position. He has the nut flush draw. Kind of the perfect semi-bluffing hand. Now Ari goes for some some value here. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the thin value play if that's what he's thinking of. And good call from Ben, knowing yeah. that uh, you know his kicker is not going to be an issue as long as you know he's up against just an ace. Yeah. So good Very on good. good on Ben for correctly recognizing that it was a chop pot there. Yeah, uh, a muck, a muck there would have just really <laughs> sealed the deal on your your teaching. Yeah. No, but in all seriousness, Zach is a great teacher. Uh, you know, I learn a lot from talking with him, and these students are lucky to have him. Thank you, Jack. Um, so yeah, look at the chip count here. So we see that folding sets, not a super yeah. profitable. <laughs> super profitable. So yeah, those of you tuning in late, uh, yeah. we've we've seen a couple of really egregious, uh, you know, turn in river folds of really monster hands with, you know, and, and not in situations uh, that the betting would warrant such a lay down. Uh, and we see Dave. We see Dave playing some, you know, kind of taggish, uh, tight aggressive poker in position, uh, capitalizing on weaknesses, c betting, you know, bluffing the river when he missed a draw and saw that Oliver was likely to give up, uh, and that's why he's in the chip lead here with a, a big, a big seventeen dollars. Mm. And it's. It's impossible to quantify, uh, you know, what pride means to these people. So, you know, the, the money might not be a lot, but, you know, playing a game on TV, you you want to win. I th I would think anyway. Yeah. So, so Dave, I'm sure is is pretty satisfied to be the chip leader at the table. Yeah. Oh, so we see Ace King tens and queens. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, good. So Ari, Ari with a, a maybe a small three bet. Uh. Let's see if Russell opts to four bet or call. He definitely won to four bet in class. Um, but I think you know, under the lights and in this new situation, it's kind of tough. I like the just call from from, from ben, ben there. I yeah. yeah, I definitely agree. It's it's a good hand, but no need to get crazy. Mm. Oh, yeah. that is good to see. Got some action here. Yeah, tens. I mean, not not anymore, of course. But tens is. You have to sort of adjust your strategy with tens when that when the action behind you goes like that and you're not in position. Yeah. Uh, you become sort of a strange hybrid between having some showdown potential and also being set mining in a way. Okay, so the action we see Ben make like a quarter pot bet there. Are you making like an insta min raise, and then Ben just call. Um, Interesting. So Ben makes a, a more sizable bet. Oh, and I think Ari smells something, so decides to just call. Yeah. That's a, that's a scare card if there is one. Again, there's not a lot of draws in ben, Ben's range, and we know that. Uh, all his money is in the <laughs> so he goes all in. The backdoor spades gets there. It's... Hmm. Yeah. So, so slight over bet. <laughs> yeah. He goes in the tank. That's a Zach Resnick uh, yeah. so signature play. A, a plus Ben right there. So this is tough for Ari. It's all of his money. But again, Ben looks very. Yeah, Ben looks very relaxed. Let's see if Ari can sniff this out. Yeah. He he's also just like doing way too. He, much he does fold. Good fold, yeah, Ari. Great fold, Ari. And I I, I don't like the kind of instant min raise on the flop, but I I do like raising on the flop. Uh, maybe going slightly bigger, trying to get value from like, mm -hmm. his yeah, first from hands. Then, then the weird donk on the turn, again, I think Ari can still be ahead a lot of the time. And he's getting great odds. He's almost getting 4 to 1 in that spot. Yeah, you can almost interpret that as a blocking bet. Yeah, the 150 turn. Uh, but then the river shove and his being comfortable is just... Yeah. It, he just always has it in, in that spot. So yeah, good lay down, Ari. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I, I don't like 
Uh, I don't like the bet sizing on the river. Yeah, it's kind of the the classic of you know, oh, I have basically the nuts, and I'm trying to, you know get max value and then I realized I sized it too small in earlier street so I'm just going to overbet because I know I'm supposed to get stacks it. To JPM I, I believe only one uh, but at least three sets. Uh, three sets? Three no, sets. So she checked back a set of sevens. She Are you sure she it. didn't fold it? She did oh, not fold it. Oh that's right. So check back a I'm set sorry. of sevens and then folding, uh, folding a set of jacks and then uh, folding kind of the snap fold of that full house. Yeah. Freeze, yeah. Uh, to big big stand. No, actually, this is not five cent, ten cent. This is two cent, five cent. Uh, the reason is that this is these are students from a poker class at Overland College that uh, Zach Resnick, my co-commentator, is instructing, and you know this is part of their class, so they're going to be analyzing their play on this show for the final. And it's uh, we've already talked about this, but it's an interesting poker scenario because you know these are definitely newer players but they came in with different experience levels and all you know in a very short amount of time got exposed to a lot of high level content from Zach and you know we're seeing sort of the various uh ways that they were able to incorporate that into their games and you know in a lot of instances we're not able to incorporate those lessons uh, JPM this is in Akron Ohio and to HPVD uh, we got a WTF. Care to elaborate on what uh what's prompting you to say that? What what's what are you finding the most interesting about this game so far? Uh, the action here. Uh, mm. And this is probably not a game for people who want to see lots of money moving around uh, in terms of a, a pure dollar amount. But you know this is meaning. These are meaningful stakes to these players and. You know, we'll see uh, people playing the best they can, and it'll it should be an interesting, uh, an interesting game. Zach, a question? Yeah, wait. So look at the action here. I think Russ makes a hero call with ace high for two streets. Then he hits his pair of fives on the river, and I think must be turning into a bluff. I don't know if Sam's thinking about because they're pretty deep bluff raising the river for a second. I think he must be just knowing that that, that line from Russ, the kind of snap pot size bet, doesn't make much sense. Not really sure what Russ is thinking there. Uh, you know, maybe he's like, Sam's an aggressive loose player, which is true. He's probably the most loose aggro player in the class, and he's betting, so ace high might be good. Then the mi middle card pairs, and he calls again, but again, just against Sam's range, it just... It's really tough to call down with just ace high with no backdoor equity there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, to answer yeah to answer some of the uh, questions in the chat, these the stack sizes are actually representing sentiments. So fourteen hundred would be fourteen dollars. Uh, the reason is I don't think that the software necessarily deals with uh, frac or decimals. Yeah. So so we see uh. Some people in the chat coming in to help us with that explanation there. Um, we have a question from President Kanye. Uh, what do you use as training guides? So I use a lot of different things. Uh, you could find all of this at uh, our coaching and podcast site, justhandspoker.com, uh, and then click the coaching tab, and then you'll see there a link to the syllabus for the class. It's a introductory course to no limit cash games, and I hope to be teaching this again at some point. Uh, not necessarily through Oberlin College, but... Uh, I'm talking to people at the Horseshoe Casino right now, potentially offering it at the casino, maybe at a university in Cleveland after hours. So definitely tune in to the coaching portion of our site if you're interested in maybe uh, enrolling in the class for the spring semester. Uh, in terms of specifically what I'm using, uh, the four books that I recommended all students buy is Ed Miller's Playing the Player, um, Jared Tendler's The Mental Game of Poker, Davis Galansky's Theory of Poker, and Matthew Jonda's Applications of No Limit Hold'em, Theory and Practice. Uh, and then a bunch of kind of free resources from the internet scattered intermittently, links in the syllabus. But I found students really learn the best when we analyze their play directly. So maybe about half hour, 45 minutes of the two hour class at the beginning was lecture. And then after the lecture, we'd all come around and 
uh, the class was nine people, and we'd play poker <laughs> eight, nine-handed. And after each hand, we'd all turn over our cards and kind of analyze what happened and try to integrate some of the concepts we're working on uh, into yeah. our explanations and justifications for actions taken. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can vouch for all those books as well that Zach mentioned. Uh, the John Dum Applications of No Limit Hold'em is a really great, uh, very you know it's a little bit ma it's very math heavy, uh, and it's 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 all in it's it's all very theoretical, uh, but it really lays out a nice rationale for why the game is played the way it is, uh, and it when you have that sort of fundamental understanding you can. It really allows you to understand why you make the decisions that you know you might have made automatically, and when you understand why you're making an automatic decision, it, it, it helps you understand when that's not the right decision and when maybe you should tweak that decision. Uh, so you might have standard bet sizings, and you'll this book helps you understand you know why those sizings are appropriate in a general sense, and when you understand that, you can start adjusting your sizings. Uh, to cater to uh, the specific situations that you're in. Yeah, and um, I mean, there's a lot of people who have said variations of this, but so that, that's a book that's very heavy on game theory and poker. And a lot of people are like, oh, if we play live poker, we don't need to play even close to game theoretically optimal or GTO. Uh, people are making so many mistakes, we can just exploit them. But you don't really know exactly how they're making mistakes. Uh, or how to best exploit them without kind of knowing what an optimal strategy is. You can know that, let's say, they're playing too loose and then, uh, you know, they're playing too passive post flop. So in short, you play a smaller, tighter value range and value bet more thinly. But if you know exactly how much they're deviating from what a good range would be at a nine-handed, you know, deep stack no limit hold'em game, then you can have a range that's more fine-tuned to maximally exploit that player. Uh, so we have a question about why do cash game versus tournaments. Uh, that's just purely what what I know more about. Uh, I have played tournaments for fun in the past, and I actually first started with sit and goes when I was a teenager, but I haven't studied that and don't feel experience in that compared to my cash game experience. So I wanted to teach students uh, what I knew best, which is uh, you know no limit hold'em cash games. Mm -hmm. To JPM, GTO and cash is a uh... Definitely not the same as in tourneys. Uh, it's not like you personally. For the least of which would be considering ECM uh, in your decisions in tournaments. Yeah. Um, a good introductory book on uh, like game theory and poker laid out in a really, really simple way is Will Tipton's. Uh, I think it's called like Expert Heads Up No Limit. Uh, it's a really great book that kind of slowly you don't even realize introduces you to some pretty advanced uh, <laughs> poker concepts. Sorry, um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, wait, so, 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 if you just want to, uh, I have that was light brown, that would be okay. So we got our little logo <laughs> on the website up there. You can check it out, justhandspoker.com. We released the first episode of Jack and my new podcast, the Just Hands Poker podcast, yesterday. And uh, from now on, every Tuesday, we'll be releasing. Uh, a new podcast and eventually with some special guests so tune in and we'll be up on iTunes within a day or two and subscribe to us on iTunes yeah it's, we're really excited about it you know recording with uh, well really really quick uh, yes our Twitter handle is just hands poker that's right mm -hmm. yeah yeah just hands poker anyways recording with Zach has been a joy because you know he's a great teacher he lays things out really really clearly <laughs> Uh, and, you know, so far we've just been discussing hands that we've played, but in the future we're, we have a section on our site where you can send us your detailed hand histories, and, you know, if we agree that it's a really interesting spot, which I'm sure we will, uh, then we'll talk about it on, this, on the show. And I think that that, you know, is a really awesome free resource to, you know, hear someone, you know, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I will say that Zach is, you know, an excellent player, and hearing his and I think my feedback is going to be really valuable to any player. So getting back to the action, uh, yes, let's get we back see to the action. Uh, Oliver makes a big three bet on the button again. 
Uh, again, kind of at the bottom is range, three years offsuit. I like the, the instinct knowing that Orion has a wide range and attacking it, but this hand is just way too way too bad in his range to, to make this play with, and the sizing is a little too small for this to really be effective. Again, we see Dave deliberate with ace queen there in the small blind. I think it's pretty clearly uh, you know, a four bet or fold there, and Dave definitely took a second, considered the four bet. But uh, especially without seeing Oliver's cards before when he did the three bet in position, I, I think this is a good uh, a good fold by Dave as a default. Um, but I think when he sees it again and has ace queen there, he might think a little bit differently. It looks like Orion is contemplating a bet. So Oliver actually flops the best of it. Yeah. <laughs> and now is thinking, do I am I bluffing? Am I value bet? And I think if you're gonna yeah. raise the three deuce offset yeah. here, you gotta you gotta bluff. Bluff it and kind of consider it as like a two pair trip semi bluff because yeah you still want to target pairs worse than kings to fold there or just fold out you know two overs which any other hand that missed is so good bet by Oliver on the flop mm -hmm. pretty loose three bet there um, so everyone's kind of looking pretty comfortable now. Uh, getting used to this this new format playing on TV. Uh, Russ even singing, which is something he is known to do when relaxed and comfortable. All right, new hand. I don't know. I think everyone's looking a little tired. I think we need some some action. We haven't. We've we've seen the potential for some you know serious action. We had a nice laydown from Ari, but we haven't seen a whole lot of you know strong hand against strong hand, and I, that that sort of always wakes everyone up in a live situation when you have. Uh, you know, lots of big bets going into the pot. It just sort of, you know, glues everybody to the game. Yeah, so here we see Russell make a raise in late position, yeah, queen seven suited. Uh, I don't don't love it, but it's not terrible. He's in late position there, but he has, you know, Oliver and Dave right to his left, two of the strongest players at the table. Just a bit, little bit too loose of an open, especially... Uh, if Russell will be able to see Dave's cards and know that he's capable of three betting light in that spot. Uh, I think it's a good three bet light by Dave. He knows Russ has a, you know, a wide opening range. Um, kind of read that so far and uh, knows that even if he is in the top of his range, he's unlikely to four bet and uh, opted to go for the the three bet there, build a pot in position, and it worked. Took it down pre flop. Yeah, I mean, I I think that's clearly a good spot for a three bet on the button against a player with a wide, you know, a really wide range, and also, you know, not a hand that flops particularly well. You have the ace blocker, but uh, you, it's going to be hard to get a lot of value post flop, just because there's not really any drawing possibilities, and you're, you're going to have paper problems a lot of the times. You get to show down, so I, I like to play from the yeah. So, uh, yes, we do review cash game hands if someone sends them to us. Uh, if you go to our website, justhandspoker.com, and go to the, the contact tab, uh, we have a Google form that asks you a bunch of questions about the hand. And if you send them to us, uh, we will likely review the hand for the podcast. No promises about timing on that, but uh, if you send us an interesting hand, we will review it on the podcast. Uh and we'll also do our best to get back to you and let you know our thoughts, even if it's not uh, something that makes it onto the podcast or takes a while to get onto the podcast. Uh, so it's a good way. It's definitely a good way to start a correspondence with us. You know, we obviously <laughs> love you know hearing about other people's hands that we find interesting and get other people's perspectives, get to know what you're seeing at the table. Uh, so starting those dialogues is really not only a great way for us to give you our thoughts, but you know get to know 
what you're seeing and you know grow ourselves. So we yeah, we really encourage it. We would love for you to post any hands that uh, you find interesting or that you find confusing. Speaking for myself personally, I mean the the reason that I play poker is not you know just for the money. Uh, it's it's really because I, I love the game. It's a endlessly interesting game that I continue to study myself and um, yeah, even if for some reason uh, we're not going to feature it on the podcast, uh, we'll definitely get back to you with our thoughts on, on any hand sent to us. So uh, send in anything you got. All right, so Ari picks up Queens, decides to call out a position. I don't like that play. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a really great opportunity to three bet. You know, Dave, I think, I mean, Dave is, seems to be widening his range a little bit. I think he realizes is that he has a a skill edge at this table and probably wants to be involved in some more pots. So I think Ari, if, if only just to build the pot, you know, the three bet is a necessity there. So I think Dave was thinking there, okay, I'm either going to fold now or I'm going to go for a multi-street bluff. Um, and Ari's just in kind of a city situation here. It's unlikely that Dave has anything, but he's out of position and it's going to be a tough next two streets. So he kind of leers at him and folds. Yeah, I mean, I guess he's considering that his effective odds are not what he wants there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I mean, I don't agree with the fold. Yeah. Uh, I also don't agree with the donk. Uh, yeah. I think that, you know, you want to keep your, sorry, I think you want to keep your opponent's range wide there. Uh, and, you, and you're not going to accomplish that <laughs> by leading out. And, you know, if, if your thought there is to get value, I guess an aggressive player like Dave, you're, you're not going to be sacrificing value by letting him uh, take the betting lead, at least at first. If you want to make a raise on a later street, that's one thing. Uh, but, no, I don't think that there's any, any necessity to sort of grab it by the horns and force the action there by Ari. But, and also, like, the way Ari played the hand, uh, against a good player, it's not a hand you want to get stacks in. Uh, Dave is rarely going to be going for value with worse. Occasionally Jackson tends, but again, he's not going to be going for three streets of max value there. So I think uh, that's a good time to, you know, treat Queens as a, a bluff catcher and pretty happily check call three streets of reasonable bets once you get to the flop that way. Um, so, you know, waking up to aces in the big line with six limpers. Um, yeah, what to do. It's it's really tough without knowing the dynamics. Uh, and if you look at the Google form, you'll see that even for players that we don't have experience with, we can still make some generalizations based on, you know, age and physical appearance. Uh, so definitely write in, and it's important to know what to do in the first few hands of the table. Obviously, you could make more exploitative reads after a little bit of time. But, uh, yeah. Uh, definitely send us your hands from whenever in the poker session. And yeah, B million, uh, we're definitely raising there. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about 10x uh, with no reads, but. <laughs> <I've been raising. laughs> okay, so this seems pretty, pretty standard. standard, yeah. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so now Sam's That's open ended. A fun card. And Oliver has the straight. So Sam's going to donk out here with, you know, he has middle pair, he has a flush draw, straight draw, and makes a battle under half pot. I hope Oliver goes for the raise here. There's a lot of draws that Sam could have mm -hmm. that he can get value from. He has the best hand now. There's just a pretty clear raise right here. We've seen Oliver stew on decisions before. Yeah, I don't think he's uh, Hollywooding. And he's sort of wearing his emotion on his face in a way that I think he'll later regret. Yeah. And, you know, you can see the inexperience just by the way that the chips are being handled. But that's, I mean, that's okay. That's that's not going to really play into the dynamic at the table just because they all know each other. They're all students. So I really like this sizing here by Oliver. I think it's it's enough that you could really induce Sam into an incorrect call with a hand exactly like he has, the straight and flush draw. 
but you know, not too big to basically scare away all hands that aren't don't contain a four as well. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like Sam's reaching for calling chips. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, that they're both kind of deep, but I don't think Sam is going to get, you know, his whole stacking when he hits a flush or when he hits a, a higher straight. So oh I think God, it's right? probably a hold there. Well, I think the fact that he has a pair, you know, plays into it. If he's up against another strong draw, you know, something. Well, the thing is, he has he has hey, one really another, bad blocker uh, to, you know, a yeah, flush draw with the eight of hearts. Is exactly the kind of yeah, hand yeah. you'd be hoping to see if you had a flush draw with yeah, the five, uh, like the kind of hand that uh, you'd be oh, thinking that you might be able to get away. You know, in that uh, showdown, if someone gives up on a draw. Sure. <laughs> so, so Sam makes a blocking bet on the river or a bluff. <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably, probably a bluff. Yeah, but, definitely but, a bluff. But I think he's definitely thinking that his hand could be good here, with the speed in which Oliver went all in. People definitely, it's more satisfying to call and to convince yourself that Oliver had a different flush draw. Um, it's good. I think definitely, I'm not usually a big fan of snap actions without some type of history. In my experience, it usually just reads itself as strength. Uh, some players, it's more likely to be a bluff, but. You know, I would think about your action a little bit. Think about what hands you're value targeting with your, with your straight, and you know, don't make it so obvious you're happy to pull all your chips in. Yeah, and of course, I mean, it's good to plan ahead, but like Zach said, even when you plan ahead, it's it's always good to reevaluate, take in new information because there is new information. Uh, you know, the the size of the bet, the manner in which it was bet. Uh, if you if you had considered all of those potential factors in your plan before the river card came, then kudos to you. But I don't see how you would. So I think it's yeah, it's always good to just take a breath. Uh, so uh, D Castell, how do you get in this game? Uh, you take a poker class with me, <laughs> and uh, yeah, enroll in Oberlin College. Uh, you can be. <laughs> You know, a history major, biology major, great science programs. Uh, no, you know, be, be prepared for some, you know, very new age liberal students. Uh, you might have some of your values questioned, uh, but it'll be a learning experience. You'll, you'll improve your game, you'll grow as a person, and, you know, improve your outlook in the job market in the future, if only marginally. Uh, DK, I'm not sure where, where you live, but I'll be offering this course in some format uh, beginning in February in Cleveland, potentially at the Horseshoe Casino in Cleveland, potentially at uh, a few other venues, but just stay updated on that. Check out the coaching tab of our website, justhandspoker.com. Uh, no, you're not. So now we're deciding who's driving home Russ's car. He's, he's having some beers and... There seems to be a bit of a concern to Russ's ability to, to drive, uh, mainly voiced by India. Oh, you're in Indiana, so you cannot get in this game. But no. if you come to Cleveland, then you can. But normally they have a you know a one two dollar game, one three dollar game, or two five dollar game on the show. And that's you know every week during during the season. So this kind of special micro stakes thing is, uh, this is the first time, and, and hopefully it'll be something that will be on a infrequent but consistent basis. When am I bringing the students to Vegas? Uh, yeah, that's that's after the advanced class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have my license, but I lost it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like I've never seen a great story behind it. <laughs> oh yeah, Sam lost his license in class, and he said it. In, he said it in class in a way that we thought there was a big story behind it. He had a DUI, uh, but he didn't. He just literally lost his license <laughs> and hasn't renewed it yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he is not able to drive. DK, yeah, one two or two five is better um, for you. So yeah, just contact Poker on Air and. If you're willing to travel to Cleveland, give it a try. So 
pretty much standard play going on on the felt. Yep. Uh, I mean, I don't. I'm not surprised Sam is getting in uh, a little late on his button after taking, uh, getting his bluff called by you know, a legitimate hand. You know, it's easy to feel a little sheepish and you know want to reverse your fortunes pretty quickly. Uh, I don't advise that, but I understand it. Yeah, and Sam also in class he he really likes the button and likes position, so he's he's been known to call with some pretty weak hands on the button to the point where his preflop ranges look a lot better even in the hijack and cutoff, and then they just go crazy wide on the button and it's a heads up pot. You know, he likes to play pots. He likes to be in position. Likes to you know try and um, outsmart people in these heads up pots. So. Kudos to him for going for it, but probably should tighten up your ranges a little bit. Okay, actions on India. Yeah. She appears unhappy with uh, the how she's been done. Yeah. All right, with East Queen offsuit. Let's see if he has to open. Yeah. That was he a does. Limp last time. Is that 20? 15. Oh, no, 15. Okay. Yeah, 3x seems to be the standard size of the table right now, mm -hmm. uh, even when there's limpers in front. The kind of the basic thing that I that I taught in this class is uh, kind of standard opens or or raises should usually be 3x the size, but if you have callers, then you add the call. Oliver might be pulling out a three bet. I like the three bet here. I yeah. think it's a good candidate for a three betting hand. Mm -hmm. And I always. Ari's had a, a pretty nice run of cards, but you know he has been involved in a lot of pots and he has not uh, been to very many showdowns. So his his image is definitely one of weakness, which it's hard to say whether he would you know perceive it like that, considering he knows that he's you know had a nice run of cards. Yeah. Uh, but I, I definitely understand from Oliver. Now let's see. I think if all if Ari checks, and I think he likely will, I think Oliver could definitely. Uh, pluck this pot away if he's willing to continue. And we've seen him uh, continue his pre-flop bluffs on the flop. Uh, and before. the turn. <laughs> yeah, and the turn. For that matter. And almost on the river, although uh, he put away the guns before then. Alright, so he does. He bets 60, which is a, a, a smaller bet. What do you think? I think that's it's, Having seen Ari play, I think it's a good bet. I think C betting half pot there, it's pretty standard. Um, <laughs> what the little we've seen of Ari, again, I think it's better to kind of go for that size and go a little bit smaller <laughs> because he's going to play pretty honest. So, so I think that's probably the best size I would uh, As a default, when someone calls a three bet like that in position, I'd probably make it a little bit better, a little bit bigger, to really incentivize him to potentially fold his tens, jacks, queens on the flop. Mm -hmm. I mean, with an ace there, we have some some showdown value, of course. But yeah, I think against someone playing honestly, uh, that you've seen play honestly, it it makes a lot of sense to sort of make an exploitatively small continuation bet. Uh, you know, and give give the odds that you think are going to be appropriate. So if you if you're going to give him a three to one, and you think he's going to only continue with the top third of his range, then uh, if you make it an exploitably small, well, then you wouldn't want to bet more than that. Is is for sure. So yeah, Sam is just kind of. Sam Sam likes action, um, and he's raising it with seven deuce. So are you experimenting all the different ways to play ace queen? <laughs> uh, limp the raise the limp. So it looks like he's gonna call in position. Oh no, he he makes oh, a min raise. <laughs> and I think that we're gonna see Sam call that. If you're yeah. willing to pay fifteen bucks to see seven deuce once, you'll probably pay another fifteen bucks to see seven deuce. Yeah. So I like the Or sorry, not fifteen dollars for all the listeners. It's fifteen cents for playing. Yeah. Two cent, five cent. So Ari uh, probably getting frustrated by the uh, 
went check check. I I don't know if I like the check from Sam. Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna play seven deuce and you get check two, you might as well. That seems like a good as a good, as good a time as any to uh, make your move. And I ha having seen how Arya's played, I can't imagine he'll continue. But maybe he's. Oh, no, he doesn't. I think he definitely feels that like people are might be picking on him. He has to. He keeps making a lot of discipline folds, which most of them have been good. Uh, but it's just frustrating to get a good one, pre flop cards, and then miss a lot or be forced to fold decent hands. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the limp re raise. Uh, so when Sam makes that small raise there, I think Ari maybe correctly identified that his ace queen was likely doing very well against that range. But doing the kind of limp min re raise doesn't really accomplish much. Everything is calling. You're not really getting that much value. I don't mind having a limp raising range uh, for certain types of games if you are going to have a limping range, but I think he should make it a bare minimum of you know 45 there if he's going to be playing ace queen. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, someone should maybe tell Ari that he can add on. I know it's. Yeah, if you, definitely. If you don't know, you can add on. It can be frustrating uh, to be stuck and also not have enough in front of you to, you know, realize the full value of your hands at the table. Yeah, I mean, we're still basically all 100 big blinds, but I'm, I'm, I'll go out there and just and make that clear to people. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks like I'm taking over the broadcasting duties. Uh, so Dave on the button has been fairly aggressive so far. He opts not to play 9-8 suited, or off suit, uh, which I think is, is good. Uh, we haven't... Oh, no, we have seen a lot of hands from Sam. Sorry, not my students. I'm getting a little bit confused about who's who. Uh, Ari again with a marginal hand. Opts to call. Uh, I'm rooting for him. I, I'd like to see his fortunes turn around a little bit. Unfortunately, the odds are against him. But let's see what he can do. I don't love the limp call from Ari with King Jack off suit, uh, for the record. I think, one, it's it's too weak of a hand to be limping with the intention of calling under the gun. Uh, and I think it, it, doesn't, it doesn't play great post-flop. And we've seen Sam bluff, and you're going to get put into a lot of really tough spots with King Jack off suit. Uh, so goes check check. Uh, there's there looks to be a turn card out. Oh, it's a king. Okay, so I think we see a bet from Ari. Uh, it looks like he took down the pot. The as you guys can see, the feet is a little bit behind. But yeah, that's what happened. Put out a, a smallish bet. Or maybe it wasn't small. Was like, 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 <laughs> right, so good to see Ari turn the key, even though he wasn't able to get much value for it. Uh, <laughs> Fortunately, it seems like everyone's having a good one. <laughs> That always tends to open up the game. You know, that's always something I look for when table selecting is who's having fun. Not only because it's fun for me, but uh, it, it, it almost always correlates with action. Uh, just like drinking. The three seem to go together. Uh, Ari came on the show with $10. Like oh, how did he come on the show? Uh, so basically, we, we had a nine-person class, but due to professional obligations and performance obligations, uh, not everyone could make this. So we got some of the under other microstakes grinders in Melbourne College to to oblige. And then in, in seat eight, we have Dave Mills, a regular on the show, who plays normally for you know, one, two dollar, two, five dollar sticks. Mm -hmm. So we, Orion makes a big raise under the gun. Queens kind of telegraphing his hand strength. Yeah, let's see if the rest of the table picks up on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Russell perhaps doesn't. I think that 
Uh, Ace Jack looks a lot worse there when someone like Orion, who's you know hasn't made any kind of raise this big, uh, just throws at 25 from first position. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's a that's actually kind of a, a good spot to just fold up there, especially when mm -hmm. it's not suited. Same with Ari. It's uh, out of position uh, with two players behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I don't like the play, especially you know. I don't know if any of them are considering this, but considering the relative positions as well, the fact that it's a huge under the gun raise and then it's under the gun plus two of the calls, you know. Yeah, ace ten. If you flop an ace, you should not feel great. Maybe if this action comes closer to the button, I would consider a three bet, but I still I still would just hold it uh, just with the raise size. Uh, so Ari Ari so Ari's donks out and finds that Orion is is here to play. Yeah. <laughs> He did, he did not get dealt pocket queens to fold to a small dog bet. And I like the creative play from Ari. I like that he's going for it. Yeah, he correctly identifies the bluffers and change marks. Bluffing into two people. Uh, like a, a lot of these creative things work a lot better in heads like pots. It's going to be. I doubt bets like that are going to be successful enough at a time in that way pots to, to really be profitable. Yeah, and the, uh, I'll, you know, not to keep bashing this, but the, the pre-flop raise size also just, you know, is a, is a huge detraction from a play like that. Exactly, yeah. Is it defense? Yeah, it's all defense-based. Do you remember any of it? I remember a little bit of it. I don't think I could, like, adequately defend myself. <laughs> Looks like there's some martial arts discussion at the table. Yeah. Hopefully, no one will, you know, deal Thanos really bad beat or else we're going to see some bloodshed. All of picks up some eights. See what he decides to do. I think he should raise. Looks like he did. Yep, he made it 20. So Oliver likes the 4x and. I think the way people are playing and how call happy they've been, like I don't mind it. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Ari finally gets a hand. He feels good about folding. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Oliver's gonna take it down. Alright, so quick stack update. Dave, who's been pretty quiet for the last round, but has played extremely solidly so far. In the chip lead with uh, 18 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, Ari, who's been the victim of some questionable pre flop calls and also poor luck on the flop, is our uh, short stack. I don't know, I really don't. I don't know, but like, that's not for me. So we see a lot of smiles, smiles all around now. People are having a good time. And that, that's one of the nice things. Uh, unfortunately, especially in, in 2015, uh, a lot of times when you're playing poker at the casino, it's a lot of non-talking, not super friendly vibe, a lot of people on their phones. Uh, one of the most important aspects about poker is the social aspect. So even though you're thinking a lot about strategy and math and, and reads, you're, you know, you're having a good time talking to people and getting the chance to just kind of relax and shoot the shit. So uh, I'm glad that that's happening right now. Yeah, and, and and from an EV perspective, a lot of the players that you really want at the table, that the conversation and camaraderie is really a lot of uh, what they're getting out of the game. So to be sort of a pill at the table and not talk to your neighbors if they're addressing you, and you know, you, not that everyone has to be the life of the party like Russell, but just just to be a generally nice guy is really great for the game, uh, and it, it and it pays dividends not only to yourself as a player, you know, but but to the whole community. <laughs> Uh, well, that's the thing, it's all right. So, <laughs> I'm not saying, you know, he, he has the top pair of aces, but it's uh, when you when you get called, you're not necessarily loving life there. There's a lot of better aces. They don't even need to call. Um, you know, there's a flush draw. A lot of possible Broadway straight draws. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 gonna be tough to put in two bets and be ahead. Yeah, uh, <laughs> especially on the river. You might be able to get some value from draws. Combo draws the flop, yeah, so I, I might bet it the way he did. I, I don't think it's a bad bet. Oh, you I definitely might, need to bet the flop. Yeah. 
The turn bet. Well, I mean, it depends on the action. Um, it's an interesting part of strategy to try and figure out, you know, on those uh, mar really marginal hands, like where are you going to get your value from, and how are you, what streets to bet to get the most value from those types of hands. And, yeah, on the river, it's just going to be really hard for him to get any kind of value because uh, you know any draws are obviously not going to continue unless they decide to bluff, and even then, it's going to be really hard for him to call a bluff with that hand. And then obviously, any other value hands are going to be ahead of his ace four. Yeah. So I think the table's talking about now how a lot of the class are, are music music students, uh, and actually the four people in the class who could not be here tonight are not here because they're playing music. We have three of them playing in the Oberlin Conservatory Orchestra concert, and one uh, trombone player playing, a, I believe, a sextet show in Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, with, and, and then here we have, a, you know, of the class that came... We have India and and Russ that are musicians in the conservatory. Uh, India and on voice and Russ on, on the guitar. And Ari on bass and Orion on drums. Yeah. Although they're not in the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, I didn't necessarily think of this at the outset of class, but I think a big reason the class attracted a lot of, you know, performance majors is the fact that you know, staying engaged and focused at the table to me is, is pretty analogous to performing music. Uh, Jack and I are both jazz musicians, and uh, I personally see a lot of parallels between uh, improvising music and you know, but going through what to do in a new hand. Because despite there are always been a lot of similarities between different poker hands, and a lot of poker hands are fundamentally the same. There's always new information to think about and different factors. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They're, I mean, they're just both activities that like demand you know, as much focus as you can give. All right, India with queens again. Let's see if she can redeem herself for some uh, questionable plays earlier. A lot of queens tonight. <laughs> One right there, Ryan with queen eight offsuit. Yeah. So she won't be folding a set. We know that. Did you say something to her? No, I didn't. I, I think that would be out of line. Oh, thank you, the fish. Submitted one of his hands online via our site, just po uh, just handspoker.com. If you're just tuning in, uh, Zach and I have just released a podcast, Just Hands Poker, uh, where every week we take uh, a live cash game hand and. Just go through each decision point uh, as thoroughly as possible. You know, give our rationale for the decisions we do make, uh, the decisions we don't make. And so far, we've been focusing on hands that we've played, but we uh, are inviting people to send in their hands through our website, just po uh, justhandspoker.com. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the fish just submitted one of uh, their hands through the site. So thank you, and we'll look we'll over that as soon as we can. Yeah, look forward to staying in contact about that. <laughs> so Russell is trying to develop something at the moment that the, the rest of the table finds funny. I imagine this is related to his his currently non-existent vocal career. Well, that's all you need to do for your audition. I'm sure they'll accept you. Wow. that some poorly disguised sarcasm from India? I'm not sure if she's trying to disguise it there. Yes. I thought that's not really her style. No, I respect that. Honesty is the best policy. So um, we got Sam making it 30 in position with the ace jack. Again, feel kind of bad for Ari. He seems to just be getting a little picked on tonight. Yeah. Well, he'll learn some great lessons from this. I mean, yeah. if he goes back and watches and hears some of our analysis, he can, you know, Send any of these hands to us on just hands, or uh, you know, I guess just talk to us. And he'll, he'll. I think one of the things that he can most improve on, of course, is his pre-flop ranging. Uh, I think he's gonna sort of, from watching this, realize why a lot of these sort of marginal hands are just not worth a uh, limp, limp calling. 
Yeah, so I really don't like the large knock back by Ari here. Uh, Sam is making it 30 there with a really wide range, and he is one to continue his bluff, so um, you're you're really going to get called by worse there with the donk bet with the king 10 offsuit, and you're most of the time eliminating the bluffing range, so I think that's a pretty standard check call. Yeah, I mean, any the donk bet always just sets off alarms, you know, and anyone who has a lot of experience playing live... And Sam in the green shirt uh, is one of the more experienced players at the table. Uh, so I'm sure he's reading that as strength from Ari. Yeah. And accurately. That's kind of how I want to do with Omaha. Now, of course, the dunk bed is you know, a tool that someone playing uh, low stakes live you know, can use because it's. It's so uncommon in sort of that's the standard players you tend to find at those levels that uh, you can make people very uncomfortable in a way that can be very profitable. Yeah, and also to the people that you know will regularly donk bet their top pair hands, um, they'll often get called by worse frequently by a lot of your average villains at uh, the one two dollar tables. So. Um, that's why it just shows why it's very difficult to to really learn from experience when playing live poker. There's so many incorrect things that are done all the time, but because of how badly people are playing, uh, it's very difficult to um, you know learn just from experience, especially with the limited sample size that comes with playing live. So back to the action. Uh, so Ari raises <laughs> a little bit of a loose open with Jack Eight, and I think Oliver. Kind of reads into that, makes a standard uh, you know, three bet on the button, and now, like we said before, Dave, you know, kind of folded the ace queen offsuit to Oliver's button three bet, but now he's realizing, okay, Oliver has literally three bet all of his buttons tonight, <laughs> maybe missing one, so uh, he's gonna opt to raise with ace eight suited and likely take it down. Uh, I think that was a good. Good spot by Dave, playing some nice solid poker, not afraid mm -hmm. to go for it when it looks like it's going to be profitable. Uh, when Oliver deliberated there, I don't think he's Hollywooding. I think he, you know, it's probably if he's not thinking it explicitly on some level is, you know, knowing that he's raised all these buttons and that Dave's doing a three bet, uh, a four bet on the blind. He doesn't have to have it, so I think he was briefly contemplating a five bet, but opted to not go for it. It's difficult to go for the the, the light five bet. Yeah, it is a difficult play, although it's one that you have to have in your arsenal. Uh, and that's, yeah, it's a great bluff by Dave. Uh, it's a great choice of hand. Uh, the ace blocker and the suited possibilities, you know, just make it like really the perfect hand to make that kind of like three bet with in that spot. Where's this guy from Cleveland? He's from Rochester, New York. Right, this is, you so Russ G is from Philadelphia, for people that do not hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot. Uh, an Ohioan, uh, someone from Maine, uh, California, Philadelphia. Texas, mm -hmm. Massachusetts. So a lot of uh, geographic variance in this poker game. Yeah, so Dave again, playable hand. Uh, seeing Orion limp. Great spot to raise it up there. Uh, again, the, the limp with 5 3 suited. Not going to be good. And then the limp call, especially playing a bloated pot out of position with a, with a hand that is often dominated and doesn't flop well. It's. Not a, uh, yeah, not great. All right. So Dave going for the C bet. Um, you know he's seen Orion play pretty straightforward, not play that many pots, raise once, limp call a few times, and fold a lot on the flop. Uh, so, kind of a 
standard spot to see bet. <clears throat> does and takes it down. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, you should really be see betting with a really high frequency against a straightforward loose passive player like Orion and uh, Dave demonstrating that nicely there. Yeah, Dave has played very solidly tonight. Uh, and Dave is actually going to join us in the booth at some point tonight. I'm going to play a little bit with the class. Uh, kind of talked about uh, that happening at some point. So uh, for those of you that want to hear what Dave, have, Dave has to say, uh, he'll be in in a little bit. <laughs> Looking forward to it. So are you going to play your A game with the students or are you going to give them a the chance? Uh, I'm going to play my A game as per normal. Uh, in class, I don't pull any punches. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely going to bring on the aggression when warranted. Yeah. And I'm, you know, not afraid to to lose a few buy-ins if uh, the the right play demands demands it. As you should. Yeah, I expect to see some raises and some laughs when you sit at the table, and probably putting yourself in the tank as your students have so aptly picked up from you. Yeah, I, I hope. I hope I'm able to put myself in the tank. So Ryan limps with king queen offsuit under the gun. Uh, I definitely <laughs> India's prefer queen a raise queen. there if you if you if that's in the hand that you want to play in that spot. I think it's pretty marginal. It's probably not something I would play. Uh, at this table, I might play it because I I feel like I have a bit of a skill edge. Uh, it's also but, eight handed, not nine or ten. Yeah, but. At a tough table, I'm folding that, but uh, yeah, at this table, it's a raise. Mm -hmm. uh, then just getting to the flop, so Oliver On makes TV. a good raise with 20. Uh, growing the pot there, and then... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and then India opts to just call with <laughs> the button. I think that's a, that's a pretty snap four bet. This is a great uh, flop. Standard. Uh, we could see Oliver continue here, although I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. Oh, this, oh, is, Orion. A, this is an interesting spot. Aaron makes a small donk bet. Uh, is... Oliver has a draw to the nuts and you know the ace pair of aces that could be good. Uh, yeah, but with India behind. The thing I, is, there's some fold equity there, as we've seen. Exactly. So uh, it's it's not a. I mean, obviously I don't think, it's a. In in this instance, it's a terrible yeah. raise, but I think it is the kind of creative play that you should be considered. I just think it's a little loose for a three-way pot, especially when we've seen India's pre-flop ranges be so tight. But I definitely think this is a spot to either raise or fold. From mm. You know, I'm biased having seen the way these people have been playing, but of course. in so, this game it seems like donks have indicated, you know, a lot of strength. Of course, yeah. So I think it's it's not. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> Action. Um, yeah. So India just calls there on the flop, kind of pretty quick call. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely a raise. Oh no! So now we got top two versus middle set versus the nut straight. So Ol Oliver's been playing pretty solid all night. You're gonna see a raise here. And then, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think India should be folding. So I don't either, but, fold. but based on her history, I think a fold here is likely and, 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 uh, you know, <laughs> it would be, a, it would be a tragedy if she uh, saw it through this time. Only. Only to have picked the one wrong spot. So Olive, Oliver tries to just make a min raise there. I agree. The fish king on the river. And then then India snap folds the set of queens. She was correct this time, but again, it's but it's we don't it's we don't want to make a habit of you know correct is the wrong word. Yeah. Uh, you she, know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. She will save herself money in this one instance so now we have about a pot size bet left behind orion has top two now this is a clear check for orion but yeah. he's gonna bet and this is a this is a typical mistake people you know it's like i i have this hand that i think is this good and i'm gonna bet this much well you know in this in this spot you just have a bluff catcher and you know you shouldn't be value betting your bluff catchers now I, I might have been a little quick to punish the bet. It is, it is. He has a good hand, and you know there are some pair and draw type hands that, you know, a king jack might call, uh, that would check behind an yeah. ace king might call. So, I, I, 
you know, I take that back. I think this this is a, a closer spot than I originally. Oh wait, uh, so Orion goes goes all in. Does Orion three bet the river there? No, I think Orion just called a uh, min raise. Well, it's not a min min raise. It was one fifty to four fifty. Sorry, right? Yeah, three x raise. Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess if if you're up against a player that will like always check back his one pair of hands, one pair of draw hands, uh, but will call that small bet there, then you can definitely make a bet fold. But yeah, that's not a bet call there. Yeah, so um, uh, 89 games is saying they need body language tells. Yes, that's not something we really cover in class. We really we're focused mainly on the mainly on the strategic parts of the of the game, uh, but as is clear, as I'm sure they'll notice when we're doing this for their final. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have a lot of physical tells, and it's something everyone needs to know. You know, people were just clearly excited when they had had good hands and looked, you know, more distraught when they had bad hands. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a clear lack of experience. <laughs> So so Russ is <laughs> Russ is talking about the fact that he tried to say hi while we were commentating and we, we kind of ignored him. I'm sorry, Russ. We love you, but we were we're in the middle of a hearing. Yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah, HPVD. Yeah, India <laughs> has had a lot of mistakes tonight. A lot of bowling sets. Uh, and I'm sure she'll realize when we're doing after the fact, but yeah, it's it's definitely uh, clear clear calls and all those things. <laughs> Teach her to show. Yeah, yeah that would be, be good. Yeah. You know, there's. I mean, the sort the sorts of fear that play into an amateur poker player are, are interesting. You know, it, because it's since it's not grounded in any sort of uh, rational strategy. There's a whole gamut of things that players might be afraid of that you know are are not sensible to be afraid of. And, you know, the, probably the most common of which is just losing any money. Uh, <laughs> and folding will guarantee that you won't lose any additional money uh, in a way. You know, anyone who's seriously engaging with the game knows that that's you know absolutely the wrong mindset and you're guaranteed to lose if you approach the game that way. But when you're playing against uh, players who have serious deficiencies, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's important to recognize the types of fear that people have, how those fears manifest themselves in strategy. Yeah. And on a, on, India's fear is, is still common, uh, if, if not in a slightly more controlled way. Uh, at lots of low stakes games. Yeah. Um, people making all kinds of folding errors. Uh, this is, just to reiterate, this is not a 10 no limit cash game. This is uh, actually 2 5 cent. These are poker students at Overland College <laughs> taking Zach, my friend here's poker class. Uh, so this is a learning opportunity for them. And, you know, on, on a game unlike what we normally see here on Poker on Air. Uh, Maybe not totally unlike what we see in <laughs> uh, but a little bit less experience, uh, especially oh a less God. comfort at the table. I mean, not that they're not having fun, but when they're involved in hands, the, the comfort and experience, uh, it's clear that they're lacking. So Orion has six, 60 cents left. I think he's not really planning to buy in again and kind of wants to make it last. So it's folded to him uh, in the small blind, and he has threes and I think he first identified that's like a fold or shove to a 15 cent raise, but he opted a fold. And I think it's a perfectly perfectly valid option when you're playing a short stack like that and you want to you know, play for as much of the broadcast as possible. So so Sam Sam goes for the, the donk the donk bet there. Uh, and Dave, I think, identifies that Sam has been playing kind of wild, a little loose. And even though his ace high might not be good, there's a lot better bluff catching candidates in his range. And I'll just pick another spot. <laughs> to so needy, I, I definitely yeah. agree. And, you know, even more than that for this game, uh, the, the money is, is real to these players. They, Oh my gosh. Knowing a lot of college students and you know their willingness to spend money 
Uh, this, this is real. So this is, you know, the difference between two drinks at the local bar, or, you know, three or four, and having a really good time or bad time, depending on okay. who you are nah, and what you have. So, so Ben's talking about, yeah, like I think Zaxxon said he made so many mistakes. That is true. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, very true. I, I, For all the viewers, I would say the quality of play tonight is definitely worse, not significantly worse, but worse than what's normally in class. The thing is, in class, when, when we play, it's we play one hand at a time, and I'll kind of give a little spiel after each each hand. So if someone's consistently making these mistakes, like uh, they're going to feel the kind of pressure for me on integrating the concepts from the class uh, better. So... You know, if, for example, this was happening in, in, in class and we saw all these sets getting folded, I I would very emphatically, especially after the second time, let alone the third or the fourth, uh, you know, t t teach against that. So this is kind of the first time they've played uh, played uh, for this, you know, long format. It's only been a little less than two hours, but it's longer than most people here have played poker in a serious, focused way before. And they're on TV, and and it's semester, and you know a, a lot of reasons why uh, play is a little bit less than a little, little less good than normal tonight. Yeah, so so Sam goes for the the two point the two point five x three bad position. I think he made it fifty. So a, a little oh oh yeah, yeah, but Oliver made it twenty, yeah. not fifteen. Yeah, and Oliver makes a a fold there. I I forget yeah, Sam's stack size, but I think I that's like, actually probably a call a call with threes. I think Sam is on the deeper side, but but I forget. Um, yeah, I definitely like sizing it bigger there from Sam, which then would probably lean it towards a fold. But with, with those odds calling just 30, uh, I think it's going to be rare for it to be a mistake to call with all your pocket pairs to set mine against Sam in position. Yeah, it's just a stack to pot ratio uh, question, and it, it looks like you know everyone pretty much. I think everyone bought in for 200 big bonds. And, uh, Oliver definitely oh. has a larger stack. I believe Sam does as well. Uh, oh. By the looks of it, he does. Well, Sam has so Sam has like about nine hundred. Yeah, so that's a that's a very clear call there. Yeah. With the pocket threes. So yeah. And for that reason, also, I like the two two and a half uh, sizing. Because you know, it, against a hand like threes, you, you really want to get your value uh, before the flop because there's very few flops, obviously, that a hand like threes are going to continue on and. Uh, you're raising smaller, then certainly you're, you're going to miss out value. You, you could consider raising it bigger, I'd say. But I would say in that spot check, I actually like a bigger sizing because th they're so deep that Oliver should actually probably correctly call a bet as high as 70 or 80 because they have the odds. So I, I think I think the principles you're talking about are right, but I think in this specific scenario, uh, that's why he should make it 3.5 or 4x. No, I agree. I, I was heading towards that conclusion as well. Uh, yeah, that's 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 an instance where you know my my first thought or my you know when when you look into your standard sizing, so you know you might think of two and a half x or three x is sort of your standard raise size. Uh, and in a in a situation like that where you take a second and think about. Uh, where are you from? Stack sizes and ranges, and you realize that a hand like fours is, is or threes in that case, sorry, is gonna, is, I don't, either way, <laughs> is gonna look you up a lot of the time because of the stack to pot ratio. Uh, you realize that you can make a larger raise to get value uh, early on in the hand. Yeah. So here we see it's a limp fest. It's the first time this happened in a multi way pot, which is good. They're learning something. And then we see Orion make a giant three and a half x over bet shove with two pair top and bottom. Uh, got Sam to correctly fold his straight draw, and then Ari just kind of getting the worst of it tonight. Um, so Ari is looking for an eight, eight or nine. Yeah, it looks like Orion will double up and and stay in there with a cool cool twenty big blinds. And Sam is a little salty because he likes to gamble, but knew that giant overbet was not giving him the right odds with a straight draw. Uh, at least it was just one caller. Uh, so he, he made the good fold there, especially when Ari calls, then he would have had the odds to call that, that overbet and 
especially seeing that he would have hit, uh, a little disappointing. You know, I agree that the six big line stack at a cash game is uh, almost never a good thing to do. You know, it's, the lack of experience is probably leading some of these players to not realize that you know adding on is an option. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I mean, I think you let them know already. Yeah, I, I, I did. But, you know, maybe they just... No one wants to be the first one to add on, maybe. Something like that. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of, oh, I'm losing and now I'm adding more money on. I could see there being a big stigma against that, especially if it's your first time. <laughs> and I guess, like, you know, you, you never really want to have this thought at a poker table. But if you are thinking that, you know, I don't have a skill edge here, I'm just going to have fun, you might be happy to just be the short stack for a while. And that's respectable. Oh, yeah. I... I I admire Orion's sister's hair, kind of, you know, he came in with X amount of money for here, and he's going to try to make it last and, you know, tightening up a little bit. Yeah, and for context, uh, Ari and Orion are not in the poker class, and, you know, even though I don't think their play has been significantly worse than all members of the class, uh, they've definitely come up with the short end of the stick in terms of how they've run, and they've made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I think they're probably, their confidence might be a little shaken. Uh which is, you know, probably appropriate, but they'll learn a lot from this. Yeah. Uh, and so it's great to see. And it's five bucks or ten bucks. So it's not going to, uh, you know, it's not going to be their rent. So uh, 89 games and Nigel PLZ. Yeah, I, I understand where you're, com where you're coming from and, and why uh, some type of freeze out would... Uh, yeah, make more make the chips more significant, but I personally uh, wanted to teach them how to play cash games because that's what I feel like I have an expertise in. So that's why we're playing cash. But I, I think the plan is to at some point introduce a uh, a blind increase to five and ten cents at some point. That's you know one of the main reasons for the confusion um, that this would be a five ten cent game and why it's advertised as such on Twitter. Uh, it's going to be likely a two five cent and a five cent game. Uh, speaking of that, it's, it's nearing nine o'clock, and I, I told Dave he'd get into the booth, so I'm gonna uh, take a little break, play a little poker, and be back uh, some indeterminate amount of time. Uh, but for the next little bit, enjoy just Jack, and uh, good luck to Dave. Uh, the booth. Yeah, so you guys are in my hands now. I'll do my best here. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Uh, Zach and I are not the regular commentators on this show. Uh, Zach, is, as we've mentioned, is teacher of the class, uh, and he and I just released a podcast called Just Hands Poker. Uh, sorry, it's called Just Hands Poker. Our website is justhandspoker.com. Uh, take, take a second to see how the class reacts to the teacher. We all know Zach's syllabus for the no, poker no, no, class no, no, no. is uh, on our website, justhandspoker.com, in the coaching uh, in the coaching section. Thanks, Spazzy, for following. Uh, so yeah, to, to get a better idea of you know Zach and my background and what we're about and how we think about poker, you can check out our strategy section. We have a strategy blog uh, on our site. Uh, you know, Zach offers coaching. And we have a weekly podcast that's going to be released each Tuesday where we address a single live cash game hand uh, in all of its detail that we can. Uh, we talk through each decision point. Uh, we talk through the reasons why we don't do what we don't do and why we do do what we do. Uh, and we don't always agree, but I think that, you know, I've learned a lot from just talking with Zach. And I think that, you know, Hearing our discussion, uh, it will, if not helpful, be extremely interesting uh, to anyone who likes poker and plays, you know, live low stakes games or even higher stakes. I think are you know, obviously it's the same game and the strategy fundamentals carry over into all stakes. Uh, but certainly the types of players you encounter at, at low stakes give a sort of different uh, range of situations you might encounter. And types of exploitative play that you're likely to take, which makes the the project of focusing on on those levels interesting to me. Uh, 
it's what I'm usually playing, and same with Zach and you know most people. Are. So we think that really looking at those types of situations in detail uh, is going to be really interesting and helpful. And I'm looking forward to continuing to make the shows. All right, let's see what Zach buys in for. Uh, I'm sure he'll buy in for as much as uh, they'll allow him to, knowing him. All right, so uh, quick update of the chip count. We've got a wide, a wide range of stack sizes. Oliver in the lead with uh, 25 bucks, uh, and then Orion with quite the short stack. Uh, you know, we we talked about reasons for that short stack a couple minutes ago. Um, they just, just be, be true to yourself. I mean, <laughs> for those of you just tuning in, uh, this is a two cent, five cent, no limit Texas Hold'em cash game, and these are all students. And uh, Zach, who is just now sitting down at the table on uh, Zach's poker uh, class at Oberlin College. And you got extra credit for the. Oh, I did? 89 <laughs> grams, I, I totally agree. Uh, you know, I'll be at family events and people will want to play for no money, and I, I just don't see the fun. I don't I don't think people take it seriously. We've seen, though, though, uh, from people's play that the money uh, at stake here is being taken seriously. And beyond that, uh, they're not being evaluated directly on their play, but this is part of a class, and, you know, there there is a great ramification for it. Uh, you know how well they play and how well they analyze their mistakes. So I think that you know both because the money is somewhat significant and because there are you know, extra monetary incentives here, uh, the level of play compared to what's possible is going to be uh, higher than if this was the normal. Uh, participants on poker are playing at these stakes. That, I don't think that I agree. That wouldn't be fun to watch. <laughs> so Ben flops top pair. I don't see him getting a lot of value in this situation. But I think you know the bet is correct. You know, Dave is about to get up from the table. We'll see if he gets creative here. Uh, so Dave decides to float, uh, and he actually, you know, picks up a card that gives him some outs. Although I think if Ben bets again, that Dave will release. Uh, and I, oh, Ben does check. I think that could turn out pretty well for him, because I think Dave, if he was deciding to float, is probably floating for precisely this reason to bet when checked to end the turn. And I think he's going to be. Well, he's definitely going to be dismayed by the call and probably surprised. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> well, the other reason for floating, you just might walk into a straight. Oh, my God. Uh, so Ben with the option. If he if he bets here, then Dave is going to be very lost but very happy. Uh, but more likely, I think he'll check. Oh, wow. No, he is going to throw out a bet. So, <laughs> uh, so Dave is now, you know, how much can I get? Uh, is the the question he's asking him the correct question? Uh, I think he's he's going to go all in. <laughs> uh, and what perfect timing! He puts he puts on the mask. He's about to get up from the table. This is just one of those value spots you dream for. Uh, I mean, I, we could talk about. I think it's a clear overbet uh, spot. I think that makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah, good. Oh, and he called. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think it's a great spot for an overbet. Dirty day. You know, I don't know about the all-in. I think it's fine. It worked great. I've seen this on that on this show before. Where, you know, the all-in overbet when you when you feel like your opponent uh, is gonna be. Wow. Inelastic to <laughs> sizing, uh, so I think it's a a great spot for an overbet. The, the precise bet size, you know, is a subject to further analysis. So, 
Dave is about to join us in the booth. We can ask him what he was thinking. Uh, and Zach's going to take his, take over his stack. Oh, I, I think Zach might be keeping Dave's stack. I don't know if I like that. I think that's a little bit... Uh, the poker etiquette's not really there. Uh, you come back? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so... How much are you buying in for, Ben? Another 10? Yeah. So a big o open the case that's Okay, closed. so Dave is coming back right now. And take a 10 out, put your 20 in. Yeah, the one where there was enough flush on the straight flush. Right, exactly. Nice hand, Dave. Oh, never mind. I have okay. All right, so you Dave is about to join us in the booth. Uh, yeah. We can get a sense of what he was thinking on that in that spot. Just the right one. So, get it close to the mic. Oh, yeah, right. Welcome, Dave. So Dave was just, uh, you know, playing in Zach's seat. He just uh, made an all-in overbet on the river after uh, <laughs> after rivering his gut shot. Uh, what were you thinking, Dave? I mean, you know, that was sort of a ridiculous situation. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I knew Zach had sort of said he was going to take my spot, yeah. so um, you know, I had my props, I had yeah. my props, so I thought, oh, well, I better, I was going to try to use him against Russ, uh, <laughs> but then I thought, well, if this is my last hand, I'm going to put my, uh, my props on, and um, then I thought I might be in trouble here because he didn't give me any indication that he was weak. I thought, you know, especially, yeah. I mean, before the river, I'm, I'm like, oh, I might really, really be getting in trouble here, so... Um, I thought I might just have to either, you know, just shut it down and just show that I was just messing around. But, you know, I knew I had the equity. And then when he bet that, what do you bet? $2, you know, 200 mm -hmm. pennies uh, on the river. I'm like, I can't see how in the world, um, you know, I'm certainly not beat unless he's got the nuts, uh, nuts oh, yeah. straight. And so I thought, I don't think he's folding. So I'm just going to shove. And I look ridiculous right now. No, you look like a so, genius. <laughs> so I figure just a crazy overbet's the right play there. I actually thought he might have a bigger hand than that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's. I think yeah. it's a little bit. Well, it's clearly a misinterpretation of hand straight. Sure. sure. Uh, I I was saying as uh as you were deliberating that I uh I thought an overbet was correct there. The the sizing. The I mean, I like the all in just because of the sort of meta aspect of it. Right. Right. I mean, that was a big factor. They knew it was my last hand. I got right. my outfit it's a on. Dream situation. And they know <laughs> that I know it's not actually a ton of money. So, and it's also a hand know. that you're not going to show up there with that often. You know? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, part of the reason I did it was also because I'm on the button. Yeah, I've been opening up, obviously, late position, but not like that. Um, so it was more, mm -hmm. all right, I'm, you know, it's kind of a garbage suited hand, but I'm on the button and I. You know they're obviously still very much learning the game as as I you know, still am, but oh, yeah. I felt like there were a lot of times where I felt like if I'm in position, you know, I can kind of just figure out what I want to do uh, when I want to do it. But um, yeah, it was just a wild. That river card was sort of absurd in that spot with my uh, outfit on. Mm -hmm. I was trying to look a little bit like that. Uh, what's the guy in the World Series with the? Um, did you see that with the? Uh, Red Hoodie, who refused to shake hands. And he oh, a, no. Is that this year? Yeah, he carried a um, bandana. Somebody who's in the chat will probably remind me of his name. He had a bandana, and I just think it's ridiculous, actually, when people wear it, like, cover their face completely and all that. So that's why I brought it out. But what have you guys been seeing here? Uh, I mean, I've when I was playing, obviously, you see people who are really just learning the game, the hand strength thing, I think, early on. Um, India... Where she flopped a set, and I think it was close to the nuts by the river. I mean, she checked it down. You see stuff like that. Yeah, so, well, we've seen <laughs> we've seen a lot of questionable things. Yeah, uh, you know, just about all the mistakes you'd expect people to make are being sure, made. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, it's almost it's in some ways about the first time they've really played. played yeah, I know. Uh, at, at all, so I mean, you know, I first played like three years ago, and I made just the most ridiculous mistakes. I still make mistakes, but they're a lot fewer. Um, pretty embarrassing stuff at the at the casino, but that's what happens when you're first playing. Um, yeah. I didn't know when I first got here. I was trying to figure out. You know, I was just sort of sitting back a little bit, playing pretty tight, um, wondering if they were going to be just more calling station type, or if they were going to be 
a little more of the timid, like if they don't hit the flop, they're folding. It seemed to be the latter. Yeah, definitely um, with a lot of the people you were getting tangled in the pots with, that was the case. Yeah. Uh, and there's also been a lot of telegraphing hand strength. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see who here? can take this. For, for, for the record, I thought Ben's call on the flop was uh, was really not not right. He doesn't, to just be calling in that spot uh, without much of a way to improve against Zach, you know, who's, you know, the teacher, clearly the best player at the table. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, their surprise there kind of shows the inexperience mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we've been seeing all kinds of fun mistakes. Uh, right, we've had a few, right. sure. <laughs> maybe more than I thought should have asked at, at the expense of some of the students. But yeah, I mean, we pretty much everything you did, we loved. So. Well, you know, I've I've been studying a lot, so I felt like there were, you know, my game is, I think, very different than even maybe six or ten months ago just because I'm, you know, trying to implement these things. Especially I realized, like, you know, the in-position versus out. Uh, that was an yeah. interesting spot. I mean, we'll commentate on the hands here a little bit, but like my ace queen, it was such a weird spot pre-flop. This ace queen fold pre-flop, um, which I don't mm -hmm. frequently do. Um, I think later on I realized it's probably not the right play there, but I think it was three bet in front of me. Uh, who's what's the name of the guy to my right, Oliver? Yeah. You know, and I thought. I think I'm. I think my analysis of his range was uh, that it was stronger than it. Yeah. really was, but uh, with the information I had, I thought this is a not a good spot to be in. Um, well, I, I, I can understand that. And I, I thought you actually made the, the right adjustment because you saw that Oliver was being really uh, aggressive on the button. And I, you picked off a couple mm -hmm. of his later bluffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't think, from what I saw early on by most people, I didn't think actually that anyone would be capable of being more aggressive on the button and just realizing that. And then I... When I saw that he was doing that, I'm like, oh, okay. So, yeah. you know, it was interesting. Well, I know that's something, you know, you can see Zach's specific uh, syllabus on our website, justhandspoker.com, uh, in the coaching section. But, it, you know, that's that's obviously something that they've talked about. So it's, it's interesting. I know, like, mm -hmm. they, just knowing how a class goes and the fact that, you know, I think a lot of times people pick up more uh, in the first part of the class. I think from the, the students in the class, the pre-flop play, with with definitely some exceptions, but the pre-flop play has been better than the post-flop play. And I know that's what they yeah, started with. I would, I would imagine. So Orion... Um, Orion is not in the class. I was going to say, you know, I think most of the people in the class are just... Uh, let's see, he was in the... Oh, it's blind versus blind. Okay. Yeah. So Ryan's gonna raise it up to thirty. Uh, I like. I like the raise if you're gonna play this kind of range. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm looking at the at the wrong person's hand. I don't Orion, like Ryan's raise. Uh, well, Ryan bet out. Sam just called with his flush draw, right? Uh, I I'm not sure anymore. I think so. Well, so I think on the turn, Sam just uh, called and then he hit the flush on the river. So that's yeah. the type of thing. Like I probably would have done the same thing, um, you know, a year ago or two years ago, and and now I would be thinking about, you know, raising the turn there with that draw. Um, I mean, it came in for him. Uh, so. Yeah, I think I'm sure Sam's surprised and probably disappointed to not get a call or raise there, because uh, that's I mean that's really a dream card. Uh, because you, you, you think Orion, uh, with the way he's played the hand so far, has a lot of aces in his range. Mm -hmm. uh, and his, I'm actually surprised that Sam didn't uh, make a bigger bet. You'd think, unless he's trying to induce a raise from an ace. And I think inducing a raise from an ace is not a good strategy there, especially against an inexperienced player. Yeah, I mean, it's just my sense... Um, it's just never going to happen. Uh, I don't think, you know what I mean? It's just not, uh, yeah. Ace is not going to come over the top. And the way almost everyone uniformly is playing today, I don't see anyone coming over the top unless it's 
basically the nuts. People mm-hmm. will call with much worse, as you saw. Right. But they call a lot. People are not considering um, coming over the top with anything less than just close to the absolute nuts. I think that's a much better, maybe even an an overbet fold spot because people are going to be so inelastic with uh, a an ace. Uh, and when when they do come over the top, I think it's it's really safe to assume that the flush is no good. Right. So they just clarified the action that uh, Orion did raise on the flop. So oh, okay. So bet raise right. call, and I I think that uh, I'm sticking to my my line even more if that's the case. All right, so let's get into this right here. Um, all right. Zach leads out. Uh, I mean, he's been watching them play. He knows that it's right. been an extremely <laughs> passive game. So I, I like it, especially with his skill edge and his... Was he the preflop too. raiser? I, I wasn't watching the preflop. No, I wasn't either, but I... I Probably. Yeah, I he wouldn't limp with that, and he was uh, no. on the gun plus one. So Sam calls with the five, which I think is a good call. And he turns a straight draw, uh, although a bit of a scary straight draw. There's a lot of the Zach's C betting range that Sam is targeting with that call. There's just no way Zach can call here, right? I mean, from what Zach has seen. Uh, I think Zach. I mean, or do or make a play. I mean, not, obviously not call, but you know, make some sort of play. Oh well, just prove me wrong. Wow. I I'm not super surprised. I think that when. He thinks he's leading out. When he leads out what? on the scare card. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Has he shown that, that he's capable of uh, just sort of bluffing like that? Sam. Sam? Yeah, yeah, Sam has. Sam, oh, okay. You know, as. Uh, HPVD pointed out Sam's Sam's a decent player. Oh, okay. Uh, he's, he's, right. He has more experience than the other players. Okay. Uh, to some of the people in the chat, yeah, this is a this is two cent five cent actually. These are poker students. Uh, seat nine Zach is the teacher of a poker class at Oberlin College, and most of the players at the table are students in that class. Uh, so this. Participation in this game is actually part of their class, it's part of their uh, like final. And so that's the reason for low stakes. You know, these are relatively inexperienced players and also college students with likely no income. And Zach's got a starting sack of like 3.3K because I just won a massive pot and he took over my stack. Somebody asked yeah. how he could start with that. You know, I, and I, I actually think that's bad poker etiquette for Zach to take over a big stack like that. I understand well, practically yeah. not wanting to cash out. Yeah, um, especially for the teacher to walk in with his students and just have yeah. like, plus especially I did all the work seat. to get it. Yeah. <laughs> there was an That's open right. seat. I, yeah. You know, questionable, but I think he's probably pretty happy to be sitting behind that stack. Feels better about asserting his dominance over his students, mm-hmm. uh, which he seems to be determined to do. Be interesting to see how they react to him yeah. if they feel like they need to stand up to him a little bit. Well, you know, there there'll be some responses of fear that will stay out of his way, and but I, of course, you have to. Uh, you know, once you see Zach's frequencies, you realize that you need to be willing to stick around with some hands that don't make sense against other players. So Zach, there with uh, your chips, thirty-three bucks. Yeah, it looks like a. Good, good chip stack. Yeah. I mean, nothing like six dudes coming in um, when you've got your sunglasses on. So. Well, the bandana was what really took it for me. <laughs> Figured I had to do something. Did we get the name of the, somebody? <laughs> somebody in the chat must know that guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Give me a Morgan Freeman quote. I'll repeat it. Yeah. Andy Dufresne. Yeah, I'm envious of the deep voice too. Isn't that um, Shawshank? Andy Dufresne. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so here I have India yeah, so under the gun. India, now, see, I'm surprised, Williams. you know, based on the, the class, I know that she would, it's probably been told to make that, you know, make it 15. Raise, yeah. make it, well, okay, so here's Ben. He makes min raises. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't, I don't mean to be hard on India, mm -hmm. but more generally, the fact that, you know, a lot of these people in the class have, have studied these concepts and... Uh, you know, been told specifically by someone who's had you know a whole lot of success playing poker, Zach, uh, to to play this way and then to to not. It shows you the sort of stubbornness of poker players in general, and that, you know that just that's really where a lot of the edge comes in is people who don't necessarily play bad on purpose, but just some sort of you know apathy. Well, I think what I I showed up to one class really early on just to sort of see and I mean real early on maybe the second class and he was going over um, pre-flop ranges and he wanted everyone to explain their pre-flop ranges in different positions and everyone had you know pretty good sense of it because they've been working on it and then we sat down and they actually played a few hands and their ranges just opened up completely you know because they looked yeah. down at a hand like Russ G okay king seven that's he would never say that's in his range when he has to do his homework um, right Unless he's, you know, he's maybe thinking about three betting it on the button, but he's he's, he's not. So, you know, at the table, you know how it is. Uh, it's hard to be that patient. And when you're newer at poker, that's how, you know, it was for me. You look down at maybe a king or you look down at ace jack and you're thinking, well, I just want to play. And, and maybe India says, well, I don't really know exactly what I want to do with a raise in early position. I'm just going to, mm -hmm. but I want to play my ace jack and see if I can hit it. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, that's totally expected and understandable from a beginner. Yeah. Unfortunately, some people never learn. Or fortunately, maybe I should say. Well, and like I said, the mistakes I made up at the horseshoe, I think, I mean, there's a couple guys, like B Million, who commentates here. I look back, I realize that guy was always at my table. And now I realize I would be at my table, too, because I was just punting off stacks. Um, yeah. You know. You've got to learn somehow. You know, it's nice to be able to learn in an environment like this where it's, uh, right. you know, two cent, five cent. Uh, I mean, I've, I think anyone at this table would be disappointed to lose 20 bucks other than probably you and Zach. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing. You know, it's, it's also a great reason why, like, taking a class or looking or finding free content like this uh is really an awesome way to learn the game without, you know, putting a ton of money at stake. Well, and if you're playing, you know, with friends who are very much beginners, your little home games or something, I mean, this is a lot of the stuff you will see. So you get at least some insight into how they're playing and what cards they're playing and, and when they're, you know, telegraphing weakness, which, you know, is with a lot of, a lot of times they are. I mean, Mm -hmm. You know, they're just basically saying, I don't really have much here. I don't really want to call. Um, I think the TV aspect might affect it, too. I, I thought it might be a little more call station-y just because so many beginners and it's two cent, five cent. And it's like, well, I got a pair I'm calling. You know, I thought that might be that mentality. And I think it's a little more like they don't want to put a, a lot at risk, especially on the show with the professor watching, et cetera, you guys commentating. They're they're more reluctant to get involved unless they have top pair or better. Yeah, unless and then they overvalue top pair. Yeah, well, you know, unless you sort of divorce yourself from like the financial aspect of it, and you know, don't treat your play or don't evaluate your play based on you know how you did financially. You're not gonna evaluate your game correctly, and I think for them, if they're trying to impress Zach, they they might. You know, err on the side of caution when uh, that's really the opposite. Of now, which what he wants who's to who's Ari? I forget his name. Ari is also not in the class. He he yeah he's in black the, shirt and the black tie. shirt and the tie. Okay, so he's got a so real he hand. Limps, or sorry, so okay. he raises with queens. yeah. That's what you're seeing. I I felt like the few times I saw a raise that big, I thought uh, might yeah. be a premium. So you've got this sort of um. And we talked oh, about oh here oh, we wow. go. <laughs> you got the and concern India, about the uh, India has had. Really good cards. The the bet sizing just changes preflop where they're just bet betting based on hand strength. Uh, this yeah. is gonna be interesting. I mean, do you think? I assume she's gonna. Um, you know, I. I oh, she called. She, she called. 
and and I I I think based on how she's played, like it's very unlikely for her to go to showdown with this hand. It, it seems likely to me that she'll fold based on how she's played with like a number of sets. She'll uh, fold she's aces. Are you saying? Yeah, she has, she's folded she's made, sets. And and she's she's had a sort of strange play. I think okay. maybe being on TV has affected her game a little bit. Right. In a weird right. Way. Oh, so you think she may fold aces here? Um. It's actually some really split writing. Like awesome. All right. Hundred. All right. So, did she just fold? Oh, okay. No, she called. Thank goodness. Yeah, All right. good. <laughs> he is and, uh, now he's in a little bit of trouble, right? Because he he loves his premium pair, as anyone new to the game does. Yeah, and it's. You think he's gonna keep blasting away here? It looks like he might. And I don't, I mean, it's, you know, against India, that call should set up alarms, but it's not. <laughs> oh, he went all in. So and the thing is, you know, I I think she called, yeah. Okay, good, good for her. Right. All right. Good to so. see Indi, India uh, see it through. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's interesting about Ari. It reminds me again. I, cause I was such a newbie not that long ago. I can remember picking up a hand like King's. And you know you can't you can't let it go. And you know you're looking at an ace on the board. I had kings, and um, somebody came over the top, and there were like two threes on the board. Mm -hmm. And my reaction was just to be mad and shove. And the guy, of course, had a three. Yeah. There's no way he had anything worse than my hand, and I just was kind of I loved my premium hand and shoved. And it looks like Ari had a similar spot here. He, you know, he's not thinking to himself, can I turn queens into a bluff, represent ace, king, get her to fold. I don't think that's a thought process. No, um, it's, it's not. The yeah, river shove is, is not good. I mean, I think the, the turn bet is, is valid because a lot of the hands continuing uh, on the flop there are, are going to be worse than queens. Uh, but yeah, too. Yeah, that's an interesting question, though, because based on what you told me about her play, well, yeah, I'm not sure I, he's aware of it, of course, but if, <laughs> if she is that tight, uh, then, of course, you know, you're not getting called by anything worse. Uh, you're, you're right. With, with India, it's, uh, it's, it's a very different type of play. I'm thinking more generally. Right. Because there's, right. there's not a whole lot of Indias that you're yeah. going to run into. So you think with the king comes there, he has queens, he can bet the turn for value against... Um, a good amount of players. Uh, well, yeah, in position, I, I would bet for value there mm -hmm. a lot because you're pocket pairs. Be to, yeah, there's a lot of pocket pairs that uh -huh. we'll probably call one more bet and check. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. All right, so here's Sam with. Uh, you could also defer to making your value bet on the river, but I I think uh, I would just make it on the turn. So this is uh, Sam. It's Sam in the beard here. Is that Sam? Sam. Uh, no, that's Ben. Oh, that's Ben. Which one? I'm mixing Sam up people. is. A, oh, Sam. Yeah, we called him hair. Sneaky Sam, and he, he was joking about how that could be portrayed as slightly offensive. Um, <laughs> so, so we'll call Stealthy Sam. He made it. Yeah, Ace Ten, right? Okay. Yeah, I agree. Eighty-nine games. Yeah. All right. So he Once she calls the turn, I think. Uh, this is this is a joke, but you might as well just monkey your hand. <laughs> I don't know if you've I don't know if you've been tuned in, uh, but I, I don't think I'm so far off there. Thanks, Posse. Zach still has my 3.3k stack mostly intact, but I feel like he's he's taking a lot of credit for all that. This is great, though, for them yeah. to be able to do this, and then they can see it. I mean, I do the same thing. Like, I'll, I can play the the two dollar, five dollar game poker on air, which you know for me is good because I'm still trying to improve. So then I have the footage of it. You see what people are doing. You can see what you do. I mean, Zach, you know, there were times I, uh, I would just have timing tells uh, if I didn't have a hand versus if I did. Take too long if I was thinking about making a move. Yeah. And timing tells have been interesting in this uh, cast. I think especially Oliver, you know, whenever he's had a, a tough decision, he's really taken a lot of time and looked pretty agonized. 
All right, so uh, India has a, another real hand here. Again, she just calls. Um, yeah. No, no opening raise. Orion calls with his suited big, so, big gapper. Um, real quick to the feed. Uh, the the chip count represents cents. So Zach has thirty three dollars in chips. Uh, we're playing two cent, five cent. Uh, the purpose being that these are poker students. Yeah, India needs to raise. Uh, well, Ryan's all in and uh, he's short stack, so he, he shoved. Yeah. Uh, now she's probably gonna this lay this a, down, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of a weird spot. It is. It's, weird spot. it's actually, you know, that's a real decision. I think against Orion, I'm feeling like I'm up against a pair there. Uh, Correct. So yeah. I, I like the fold. Well, you remember he shoved short before with two pair on the flop. Yeah. Remember he had like king six. Mm -hmm. um, so we haven't seen him shove his short stack in there with something uh, where he's just on some like air ball or a little draw. So mm -hmm. I don't even know if he's doing that with like middle pair, uh, possibly. Yeah, Pasi, yeah, I, I'm thinking about that shove. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it takes, it, it's going to need some, we need some thought to like think through that. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a good spot, I think, to, to shove because you're I mean, so short. He needs to defend. Zach was pre-flop raiser with his queen 10 off. Uh, check through. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sam, sort of slow playing here. Um, I mean, he didn't bet the flop if I saw it correctly. Okay. Yeah, to 89 games, I, I, I agree. Uh, you know, I, this is a, uh, I think this is probably going to be the longest poker game. Maybe any of these players other than Zach uh, and Sam have played. Uh, so, I think mental endurance is an area of weakness for pretty much everyone at the table that is hard to address in a classroom setting. Uh, I know what Zach was saying earlier is that they, they went through hands one at a time and would talk through each hand after playing it in class. And, uh, you know, playing like that, it definitely helps keep the focus. And, you know, when you're, when you're getting any tell pointed out, uh, you know, immediately it's, it's maybe, it maybe doesn't reinforce the concept as much as losing a bunch of money. Uh, which these guys, fortunately and unfortunately, haven't had an opportunity to do. Well, yeah, I only won. All right. And so that, you know, a, I like that fold, yeah. you know, which you actually it, you don't see it a lot, and you see a lot of people limp that, um, like right. a, a weak ace there. That, that's you know, I like that fold. Um, All right, with rare. a nice raise. Okay, good. Ryan calls. I think it's a. Oh. Uh, well, look at this. I might three bet that on the button if I'm Orion. Uh, right. I don't. I don't think it's gonna play great as a call. I agree. Sam as well. I think it's also a, a good nice three bet, but it, it plays a little bit better as a call since it's suited. But I think it's well, look at this flop. Also makes it play better as a raise. A lot going so on here is, uh, with everyone's hand. Um, I mean, I, everyone's obviously got. Um, we got, let's see, Orion with a gutter, Ari with um, a gutter ball to the nuts. Wait uh, a minute. So Ari, just fold it? Ari folds. 
it's a, it's a tight a tight fold. Uh, yeah, I, you know, it reminds me. Again, I can relate back to when I was in these situations. You're not thinking about the equity that the overcoat had <laughs> as well. Either. And look at Ari stewing over the fact that he missed a. <laughs> yeah, that. There you go. Don't reveal it, buddy. <laughs> yeah, don't say it. Yeah. Well, you know, and looks like Orion is pulling out a uh, betting chips, which is very strange because his draw just disappeared, and now he has just a worse pair. But I think that it might work. Oh no, I'm sorry. Sam went all in. Did Orion call? Or I swear I saw Orion push his chips forward. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, the action was wrong. Uh, yeah. Orion is the one who went all in and Sam short stack all in. Sam calls. And and I don't. Right? Yeah. I don't okay. like that all in at all unless he feels like he's turning his hand into a bluff, and I don't think he is. Uh but maybe he was. I mean, I think I can remember, you know, sometimes looking back, you don't think of it that way, but you're thinking maybe maybe if I shove here, he'll go away. So you're yeah. not really thinking about it exactly in that, was, in that light, but you're maybe just, he actually is turning your hand in bluff because you think I can make the guy go away. Yeah. He looks like he's going to throw up. Who, Ace King? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, if an Ace came, he also would have been upset. I mean, that's what I mean. I think... You know, the board yeah. was a little, yeah, obviously a lot of straights and everything, but I think the insta mock ace king there, you're not really thinking about the overcard equity that's part of your hand. You're just thinking, I missed and I, I'm just waiting for a 10. Yeah. Which, of course, came. And the fact B million that, would say, bring the pain. You know, you've got some showdown value there with ace king. You know, against a hand like ace 10. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, a lot of hands with the 10s that are drawing. I don't think that often with two players you're right. going to be no, but you know at a percentage point, you know against their ranges, just from showdown value. I, just of the equity that you could expect. Oh, Zach straddling now just to mess with his own students. Yeah, great. Zach, uh, I can speak on Zach's behalf. He's not normally uh, a proponent of under the gun straddling. Uh, but I, I like to play here. <laughs> I give Zach a C minus for straddling against his own students. Yeah, he'll he'll have to justify because uh, somebody's got to grade him in this in this whole process. Um, Fifty all day. So it's back to him in the straddle with Queen Nine off, right? He, okay, so he raises, of course. I think. Uh, it, whoa. Yeah. See, yeah, right. And it worked. And that that demonstrates uh, sort of the feel of the table, you know. Um, yeah, aggression is going to pay off. Aggression, unless lots. somebody's looking down. I mean, I wonder what happens there if he's looking down, if someone's looking down at Jacks and yeah. you see Zach make it 50 or Queens. I, do you, do you, I think they're, yeah, they're sticking the around. Where's the range? Sticking around with, with tens jacks. and Jacks? Oh, tens, tens? Tens, I think, gets more marginal with a player like Ari. Uh -huh. But I, I, I think tens is more likely. Yeah, obviously, it's Yeah, I mean, but I think we, I mean, we agree it's a. Uh, a huge error. I mean, it's tough. You know, that's the, the thing I notice as well, and this this happens to me when I play against players that I know are more experienced or better. You, know, there's nothing like looking up at someone you know is better than you, and they are betting into you or the aggressor. It, yeah. And you just you can very easily convince yourself, I don't want to get, I don't want to mess around here. I mean, if you're in position, I'm much more inclined in those close calls to be involved. But I can understand. I can very much relate to where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, Zach bets big like that, and you're just you. Even as a more experienced player, you know you're going to be facing you know, barrels, and it's going to get very uncomfortable. Yeah, and I think that being conservative against tough players is is wise. You know, there's a lot of money to be made from so many bad players at these low stakes <laughs> games that sure. there's not a huge reason to get out of line against uh, bad Here players. Now I wonder what Zach will do with this uh, because. Other people at the table have gotten tricky with seven deuce. Oh no! I mean, I told him I was waiting for seven deuce, and I had to muck it, and I was upset because everyone's waiting to three bet seven deuce and then show it. Mm -hmm. Now, still, I I don't that sort of thinking that you don't want to mess around with the best players because it's it's not worth it because uh, there's so much money to be elsewhere. That's that's not obvious justification for Ari's play. You know, it it's the same game. As far as the cards, no matter who you're playing against, uh, 
behavior is obviously wildly different from player to player, but you you just if if you have a certain amount of equity and you know there's a certain stack to pot ratio, you just you can't fold uh, free flop in that spot. Now I don't know Ari's stack. That definitely plays into it, but I don't think that he was considering that. Uh, and since they're playing relatively deep, it, it just makes me think that, uh, you know, if Ari has at least like 500 in chips there, he has to call. So here's Oliver is leading out with his huge draw. Um, he's gonna, yeah, he gives it up. Mm -hmm. So stack size is staying pretty constant. Yeah, as we can we can see here, Ari had about a thousand. So for stack pot, stack to pot ratio considerations, the implied odds of even just purely set mining with eights, and you know that's that's a way to do it. Is you might feel like you know against a worse player, you call with eights there because not only do you have a chance to hit a set, but you also have a chance to outplay them on the flop. Even if you feel like. Uh, your only way to victory is by hitting a set. Uh, you're still getting the odds to, you know, see that flop. Uh, to some of the newer uh, people who are just turning in, <laughs> I am a guest commentator on this show. My friend Zach and I are here. Uh, Zach is playing in seat nine, taking over for Dave, who is commentating me with right, commentating with me right now. Uh, these are. Most of the players at the table are students in Zach's poker class at Oberlin College. Uh, they're playing two cent, five cent, uh, no limit hold'em, and it's, their participation is part of the class. Uh, they're going to be reviewing their play for the final. It's extremely beginner. You know, this is probably the longest uh, full game they've ever played ever. Um, so you have to factor that in. All right, let's see here. Ari's got nines. What's interesting is that they've they've been exposed to some high level content, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know they they definitely have the potential to do some advanced things, mm -hmm. but so far uh, on a whole they've been failing to you know make correct plays very often. Although there has been some creativity, which has been nice to see. Uh, all right. So again, I I hate the limp by Ari. Sure, uh, sure. But we don't even need to. Oh, here we go. So he's been yeah. rewarded, but he's going to have a... Oh, wow. I didn't even yeah. see the check. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, but uh, from what you described, he's like, I mean, depending on how aggressive he gets, Yeah. I mean, okay, so she let out. He just calls. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I've... I don't like the slow play here because it's India, and if she's leading out, then she probably has something. In, well, and this is a card that might slow her down. Yeah, I mean, if, if she's, a if she's that afraid of sort of straights and monsters on the bed. Um, so India is going to call. Okay. And I, I think it's a good call. Uh, I, you could you could talk about raising here, uh, and I, I think there's some merit to raising for hand protection. Uh, so he just bet a hundred there at the end. Um, you know, I I think that Ari should have probably. I mean, the pre-flop play was not good. Post-flop, uh, I think the handout played pretty straightforwardly. I mean, there there was some room for other decisions. I think Ari could have raised the flop for value, which would have been a good play. Uh, and and you could have raised the turn for hand protection uh, and for value. But that's uh, a more marginal play. So Ari and Orion are not in the poker class. Uh, the best dressed you know, guys are not in it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that, you know, I, I think especially in the pre-flop game, you can see the difference of who's been in, in the class or in the class and uh -huh. who is not. Mm -hmm. Limping nines. Yeah, not, limping nines. Not recommended. That that's points off, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Half 
Trevor's going to have to grade my commentary. This is my first time commentating on anything poker related, so I'll take Trevor's spot here. Orion, King Jack. Should be probably just a limp. No, okay, good. Insta call. Russ G. All right. Is that going to three bet here? No. See, there's India with another, I think, good fold of a weak ace. Again, stuff you don't see that often from beginners. They just want to see a flop with an ace. Yeah. You were not going to run. Now, yeah, I like the call from Ben. I think you could consider a squeeze here. Uh, oh, that's your. Mm -hmm. I think the call is. It's fine, and he's flopped well. Uh, let's see if if he takes the betting lead uh, or defers. Okay. It looks like he's going to take the betting lead, and I I don't mind that. I don't mind. Yeah, I kind of like it with all these players. Uh, I mean, I think. It's, that hits a lot of their ranges, right? Yeah. And um, I feel like, he, you know, it's... It is a draw-heavy board, so you're going to bring mm -hmm. along a lot of draws and get that in that way. It's a pretty small bet to be betting into three people. Oh, I didn't I see the sizing. Using, Correct. Yeah. A raise from Orion. See, here it is. Yeah. Well. Well. Got it. Uh, this has definitely worked out for Ben. I don't know if I agree with the sizing. Uh, I think if I were in that spot and I wanted to bet out, yeah, I'd probably bet closer to two thirds or maybe pot. Yeah, you want to get the value. There's a lot of draws, like you said, out there. Yeah. A lot of straights. They're, they're going to be hard draws. Um, but this is going to work out. So we see this tendency with Orion being short. It seems like there's a mentality of like if I have a decent piece, it's going in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, oh wow. Brian King Queen has been getting crushed today, although there was that all in earlier the ace jack versus the King Queen. Um Remember that hand, I, Oliver I, Oliver shove with nuts, Ace Jack, and uh, right. I think uh, it was Orion with top two. Right, yeah, but no, I do remember. you know, and yeah, Orion, and he said the only thing that could beat me is a straight, and Trevor said, well, or, or sets. You know what I mean? Oh, really? So you have a little bit of that. Yeah, um, we, we can't uh, quite hear that. Yes, yeah, so you have the again, not just um, you know, overvaluing him, <laughs> but even oh, in a river situation, you're not not even realizing that there are like. Multiple, multiple hands out there that, that do beat you. Really? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> once again, just like telegraphing the experience. <laughs> but, you know, one thing, you, even though you see these pre-flop things like some limping and, and things like that, for, for people who have hardly played and, and, and things like that, I mean, you're not seeing the total limp fest. It's not just six people limping every time, which is, you know, a certain yeah. table, you know, up at the horseshoe, you, you'll get to certain tables. That's just what it is. You know, you're just, absolutely right. So in some ways, their, their pre-flop game and those basic, you know, aspects are, you know, they're signs of it. Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, several of the players are close to break-even status, or maybe even a little bit better. I think the experience edge is still going to be tough for them. Uh, and for even some of them who have maybe a better theoretical understanding, uh, the physical game, as, as some of our viewers have pointed out, is really far behind, which is going to kill them in a live game where... You know, you talking about timing tells and all that. Timing tells and yeah. just facial expressions. Uh, right, right. Yeah. I think the first time I got into a hand with Orion early, I mean, the flop came. He looked up at me and just I had to see the biggest grin in the world. It was so early on. I was like, I, 
I thought he missed, but it was just one of those funny things where I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what this means. For this. Yeah, he, couldn't, he couldn't help himself. All right, so that. this is an interesting spot to talk about probably. Um, mm -hmm. Oliver, three bets. Yeah, that's... Uh, Zach calls in the cutoff. Okay. I don't know if I like the three bet in the hijack. You know, there's a lot of people coming behind, you know, including Zach. Uh, and Ace Jack offsuit. You know, it's a good candidate oh, for three betting sorry, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if this is one of those spots. I, this might be. To me, this is closer to a call or maybe even a fold. See, I. You know, it's interesting. I mean, I. You may have probably studied more of the theory than me, but. I look at Ace Jack offsuit and I used to think, oh, this is good enough to call it. Now I think, well, this is kind of marginal, but if I three bet it, it gives me a lot of different possibilities. Maybe take it down right now. I've got the betting lead. So that's part of my mentality with that hand there. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think the three bet is egregious or anything, mm -hmm. but I like the three bet, you know, a lot, a whole lot better uh, in the cutoff of the button with with fewer hands to come behind. Okay. So is it on Oliver? Okay. Small bet. So what's Zach thinking about right now? I think Zach, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. not surprised. Mm -hmm. He's probably thinking, I mean, I'm sure he's thinking uh, how often is this, uh, my student, <laughs> who's been playing somewhat tighter than the rest of the table, uh, in, for my impression, of, who's three betting right. and then, you know, beating out on the flop with an ace out. Yeah, it's just, you know, you could, you could <laughs> call hoping, you know, to see a turn check, but I just think it's, uh... Yeah, there's a lot of aces in his range right there, there and down. additionally, he's never going to lay down an ace. Mm -hmm. Well, like ever, in that situation. Yeah, and a lot of the not ace type hands that he's three betting are probably not hands he's going to see bet. You know, kings, queens, jacks, yeah. tens. Yeah, that's an interesting spot because we had the other one earlier with the queens when the king flop, you know, kind of goes back to that same situation. Um, if Oliver has kings there you know, and the ace flops, does he – I think a check is smart, but I think people with the queens and kings, they just feel like, I don't know why I'm betting, but I just need to bet. Yeah, and I guess, you know, if you really felt like – that's what I tell people. Uh, like, someone was going to be coming out with those types of hands. Then you're sort of in a fold uh, or raise <laughs> spot, or you could you could uh, float to raise later. But mm -hmm. I think that Zach's thinking probably is uh, that he's going to show up with some more aces. Yep. Uh, and yep. that he's going to check a certain amount of his pairs. Yeah. That it just, you know, it's it's not a good looking range for him to try and make a play. And of course, I'm sure he doesn't feel like he's ahead very often at all. If ever. Raise Certainly, there's some people whose range is in that spot. All right, so here goes the professor. Oh. All right, so he's um, after, no. you know, getting or getting bet out of an honest pot. He feels like he has to. You know, real, real sort of status. Well, and it's interesting, you know, he's showing why people are so uncomfortable playing when he's in position because he does stuff like this. He makes these big bets. And people, it's so funny to play with him at the at the horseshoe. I mean, the eye rolling at the table. You know, they're like, here this kid goes again. Yeah. But he knows where he's at. And they're folding and getting mad. And then when they tilt and they're ready to, like, fight back, he knows. He's pretty much, like, waiting for them to do it. So mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing a little bit of the, like, someone bets 10, he makes it 50 with 9-7 offsuit. And, you know, what do you do? When you're facing that fifty-dollar bet, um, it puts you in a tough spot. It shows you, you know, the value of position and being aggressive. It's just a horrible situation to be facing that from a thinking player. Now, if you're a really thinking player, I mean, I'll turn it over to you. What do you do in that spot if you uh, you open up and uh, he three bets you to fifty, and you know his range can be pretty wide? I think the hand now, the well, hand it was it was facing was pretty weak, but. Um, you know. an, an underused play uh, in low stakes cash games is, you know, a four bet. You know, I'm absolutely against Zach. 
and when Zach and I play, it's it's even more ridiculous, right? Because we're like, there's so much level level pride level. at stake. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm you know I'm four betting, five betting Zach a lot, and a player like Zach, you know, you don't sit down with a player like Zach very often at all. Uh, sure. At a two, I mean a two five game. But when you do, you you just have to be ready to play, and you have to be ready to four bet light. Uh, that's you know if, if you're not going to four bet light, then you will not be able to withstand mm -hmm. light three betting in position. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to implement that a little bit. It's interesting because I don't do it that often. You know, there isn't really that much of a leveling war when I do it against somebody because you know I don't think they're immediately thinking like here we go, this guy can have anything. So it gives me an incredible amount of fold equity. You know, mm -hmm. four bet is super strong. Um, you know, like an eight a six offsuit. I I did that in a two five poker on air and against someone who hadn't played much with me, and I just think they figured they're so often against kings and aces there. Yeah. Check. Here's the okay. here's the slow playing. Yeah. I, mean, I guess, well, there's a lot of straights out there. Well, I should take that back. So Ben, you know, Ben has to bet here, of course. Uh, let's see what sizing he chooses. I wouldn't mind, you know, this is actually an interesting sizing question because you could bet small, just hoping to get a little value from someone who's hoping to mm -hmm. split the pot, or you could bet big. Uh, I don't know. I actually prefer a small bet here. Now, now that I'm speaking out loud about it, uh, because I think that when yeah. you bet big like this, you're basically just you're only ever gonna split the pot. Well, when and it's, someone calls, yeah, and it's, you know, so you're, you're not gonna get value from people who would call just like saying, you know, whatever. I'll see, he's see gonna it. call. He can't lay oh, it down. Man. See, well, I uh, guess I was right. Maybe but I, I mean, I agree with you sorry. because when a one liner comes in and the ace makes the straight, I yeah, mean, that's in everyone. There's so many aces in people's range in this spot that if somebody bets 300 like that. I mean, yeah, it's um, it's, a, it's a terrible call. <laughs> um, that's what I thought we might see the sort of call station aspect uh, in this game. And I, and again, I always say this like I feel a little odd critiquing, but I say that because that's what I would do. Like. Two yeah. years ago, just two years ago, I would look down and be like, "Oh my gosh!" And I would invent a reason the person's bluffing, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "What are you? No one's laying down two pair. They've been here for two hours. You know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna fold two pair." Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a disappointing spot, and you know, there's a little bit of a fear of being a fear, fear of being outsmarted that you know plays into certain people's mistakes. Or just rust with dogs. I see the question, what stakes does Zach play? Uh, Zach plays mostly uh, at the Horseshoe in Cleveland. and uh, The biggest regular game there is 2-5, so Zach is mostly playing 2-5. Uh, I'm sure he would play a 5-10 game uh, in, the right, in the right spot. I don't know if he's rolled for 10-20 quite. Uh, but I'll let him answer that question. <laughs> a couple more trumpet concerts <laughs> that are well paid. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas season is your life. Ben doesn't know it's on him, or all right, I, Ari's. Hmm. Ari sort of seems to be randomly oh, alternating between. Oh, yeah. Calling and raising. I can't tell what he did there. It says he called. I assume that's what. Yeah, I think he did the same thing with pocket nines. Um, it seems like it's just the same old thing, unless it's jacks plus or big picture cards. It's going to be a land. Yeah, well, but he has been opening some some sort of marginal hands, like king jack offsuit right, type hands right. that I would. I think he sees uh, picture guess. cards and thinks raise. Yeah, and that's a. I mean, that's common to say too. This will be my last hand commentary. <laughs> Yeah, Just like my last hand on the table, I'll try to make it good. I probably should put my sunglasses on. Ryan, you know, he just bets huge when he has any piece. I guess I'm going to have to go remember that when I get out there. Yeah, this is a little bit of an unfair advantage, I'd say, for you. This is, only, this is really like... 
Oh, those actors did the same thing, so I guess I can feel all right about it. You just watch for two so hours and then play. Watches for two hours and then takes over. Yeah, the stacks. I guess I, much choice. Yeah. Choice with anyone else. All right, I will turn it over to the uh, professor. Yeah. I gave you a C minus on your straddle. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, question question the ethics here all you want, but I I do think it's a good uh, learning opportunity for all the guys here. All the guys are real. Uh, yeah, well, like Russ and like. All right, welcome back, Zach. Yeah. To be fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so a few things. I think the only notable hand for me to talk about is my hand with pocket tens. That's kind of an interesting spot pre and we, post flop. You talked about talked that a lot. talked a little bit about a post flop. Uh, pre flop. Oh, well, you don't know what he had. Uh, so he had ace jack offsuit. Oh. Yeah. What do you think about his three bet? I think his three bet's great there. Okay, I wasn't too keen on it, but you know, Dave and you are. You and Dave, obviously, coming from a similar place in terms of your strategy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Give your reasoning. I'm interested. Why the ace jack was good there? So, what happened was Oliver just to be sure. Oliver was in the small blind. We had one or two limps. No, no. Oliver was in the in the hijack. Oh, he's in the hijack? Oh, yeah, he was in the hijack. Okay, so he's he's in the hijack, and it goes like limp, and then Sam or Russ raises, right? Sam raises? Sam raises. Sam raises, yeah. So Sam Sam is raising with a pretty wide range, uh, and I think Oliver is going to be, you know, building the pot up and get called by worst aces and, you know, worst hands. And obviously, yeah, Sam is limping a lot of his worst hands, but I think he's also raising some of them too. He's not raising just premiums. I, I agree that Sam's not just raising premiums. Uh, yeah, it's true. But I guess maybe from the hands that I've been actively engaged in, he's, he's played... Tight is the wrong word. Uh, sp sporadically tight and not tight. Yeah, I mean, that's, I've, play, I've played with him a few times just in like random 5, 10 cent games that you know, outside of class and in class, and he's definitely a little sporadic, but he's, I mean, his range is wide enough at any point that I think that ace jack is is a clear is a clear three bet there. Um, okay. And the thing with tens is like I I know that Oliver is going to be three betting if anything a little bit too much in position against a player like Sam, but I just didn't see much value, especially given how deep we were, in making it huge there because. We're so deep, and I feel like you know I have a positional advantage, I have a skill advantage against Oliver. Uh, I don't want to have to four bet fold that hand to a premium, you know. Yeah. So that's that's what I thought about an opposite of call. And then honestly, on the flop, I just had a very strong physical read that Oliver hit, hit the ace. So we were talking about Oliver's range there on the flop. <laughs> and what is he going to see bet? You know, we're thinking that you know of the hands that are likely to three bet, almost most of the ones that are going to you know, see bet that flop are going to be aces because a lot of the you know pairs are probably not too keen to bet that flop. Mm -hmm. Maybe they will. Uh, in which case, you if you think that he has enough pairs in his range and he's going to be betting a lot of them, then I think it's it's a good spot to raise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Turn your hand into a bluff in that spot. Yeah. But I, I, we, we agreed that it wasn't. And I think I like your fold. Um, and if you had a strong physical read, then I, I. Even I mean, yeah, agree. for that, for that sizing, I'm obviously absent of physical read, not folding for one street. You know, get a half pot bet, three to one odds. So, yeah. Six king oh. and two. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do get revenge. <laughs> so yeah, we kind of missed the action here, but it looks like Oliver made a. Looks like a. Oh, a, nice, a blind battle. A nice value bet there. And Russ is Russ is dejected. He he takes the losses personally. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? Oh, HPVD. What stakes do I play? Uh, it really depends uh, on the game. Uh, unfortunately, the, the Cleveland two five game is is a pretty tough game. So it really depends on the lineup. Uh, I like to play two five when when possible, but. Often uh, it'll be a lot more profitable for me to play a one three or one two game there. Um, so I'd say, you know, in the last year or so since I 
uh, playing more. But in the last year, since I've been able to play 2-5 comfortably, it's about 50-50. And then when I travel to other places, it's uh, basically all 2-5 these days. But again, I just really love poker, so I'm you know I'm trying my hardest out there when I'm playing two cent, five cent, two. <laughs> people getting to know each other at the poker table. Yeah, Oliver's Oliver's a journalist. He uh he writes a big article for the Oberlin Review every week. He's some quality stuff. Check it out. Oliver Bach, B O K. So, words of wisdom from Russ G. We're all going to die one day. <laughs> yeah. That's almost never a good rationale for a poker decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So India finally uh, hung in there with her big pairs. Uh, it's just the wrong time. What is that? When? With the uh, pair of aces? That was a weird hand. Yeah. I saw that hand and I was paying attention. I was very confused. But are you referring to a different hand? I honestly can't remember. They're all sort of blending in a little bit for me. Yeah. yeah. She like played aces passively pre and post flop and Ari made like... <coughs> An all-in value bet with queens when there's a king up. He definitely wasn't bluffing. And no, India, yeah. like, kind of tank called. There was another hand that uh, something didn't go well for her. Mm. I can't remember. Oh, but she got oh, away she, from it. She had the jack three in Ari. That was one. Yeah. yeah. She might have folded that at the beginning of the session. Yeah. Yeah, it really goes to show you. So for a lot, a lot of players, it's like you know when they're when they're doing well and running well, they'll be a little more bold in their in their calls pre and post flop, and then uh, if they're running worse or they've seen that they've made a lot of bad folds, they'll they'll really adjust significantly in the short term. Mm. So did Orion call a bet here to get to this point? Unclear. <laughs> Chat. Yeah, so yeah, Orion not doesn't normally about to get called by worse. <laughs> but <laughs> Sam's non believer. Uh, oh man. Not Orion's not Orion's day. So Orion We're gonna see without, an all in, yeah. Without taking a whole lot of time to think about what that seven means. I mean, I think that he should be value betting here. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the spade draw comes in. Like, oh, the spade draw comes in too. Yeah, I, I think that... It's definitely a chess. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, he is... It's uh, a call for another, like, 60 chips or I think something. He, he looks like he's holding his cards like... Oh. Oh, he. Three <laughs> sevens. Yeah, so uh, you're never good there, and it kind of just yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, okay, that's, I mean, it's it's poor play on the river. I definitely like you know leading out on the turn that wouldn't hit the jack. I might not yeah, necessarily go that big, but a uh, good lead there. You know, would you lead out if the seven of diamonds comes down? Seven of diamonds. Um. I mean, still no, because with Sam, like he's one to call you on the. I'm. Not, I wasn't. We weren't sure if there's a bet on the flop, but if on the turn he is eight nine off suit, like that double gutter, he's calling there. If he has spades, he's calling, and so he has a lot of missed draws in his range. So I'd rather, mm -hmm. I'd rather play that as, yeah. as a check call, and you know potentially fold depending on sizing and, and reads. But I, I, I don't think I'm ever betting a seven now. Yeah, I agree. A lot of the uh, a lot of the hands that you would be targeting with a you know, an ace jack there would be unlikely to make it to the turn, especially if there was betting. Uh, and I, I think there was. Yeah.
Yeah, I think I think Russ needs his own personal mic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if only we could turn him up a little bit. That's real serious costume. Like understanding your own image. Like what you look like in their eyes. But that's one of the hardest things to figure out. You guys have a little discussion about image there. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely definitely important. What you look like, how old you are, really change how people are gonna play against you. For some reason, even more than most other young people, I just seem to really get people to spaz out and <laughs> play a much wider range and do different stuff against me. Yeah, I mean your style of play for one. That's but even like before I like get into a session, you know, I just yeah. find I induce a lot of action. Well, I think you know, part of it could be that I think like you often show up with maybe peculiar snacks to some people. Uh, you might you might come across as an odd guy even though you're not. Uh, okay, so we got uh, Dave raising on the button with King Jack offsuit against a relatively wide opening range of Sam. I dig. Um, Sam calling with Ace Knight off out of position there against you know a good experienced player. Again, just losing play. He happened to flop the best this time. Remember that video Zach showed us of that dude like totally losing it? Oh, yeah. So yeah. quickly to the yeah. chat, this is actually a 2 5 cent game. These are poker students of my co commentator, Zach. He's uh, teaching a poker class at Oberlin College, and participating in this game is part of the, the final. And they'll be evaluating that play. Oh, so, so we have here Sam raising the flop. This is a really bad raise. This is kind of a way ahead, way behind type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you want to keep the bluffs in Dave's range alive, I think you're going to see with all of Dave's air, a double barrel on the turn of the river a decent percentage of the time. And if you're going to play Sam off in kind of the poor way Sam did pre-flop, uh, you should play it as a bluff catcher where you're prepared to call a minimum of two bets post-flop. Um, HPBD, what pre-flop open size do you use? It's really, it really depends. But I would say I generally do a smaller size in 2-5, given I'm just playing with better players that are going to be able to exploit larger race sizes more. Uh, and there's also just generally a little bit less looking going on. Um, so like in 1-2 one, in one, or 1-3, one, you're going to see a lot of limps. So I'm going to play like a tighter value range when I raise and you know, raise it a lot bigger and try to isolate to one or two players. Where in 2-5, there'll be less limpers, so... For me to isolate to one or two players, <laughs> which is generally what I'm trying to do with any re-raise size or or raising size or opening size, it's just going to require require less. So I would say I don't like to have a default because it really can change based on player dynamics and what's going on. But um, two five, you know, four x and one two five x. But again, that's like that's less of a default and more of like based on my experience so far. This is what uh, this is what is normally the size. So yeah, I kind of feel bad for Orion just sitting at the table now, chilling out. But you know, the gambling game. You know what he got himself into. Yeah, good discipline, I guess, from a bankroll perspective. Uh, even though <laughs> st uh, stakes are are not too severe. Like Russ is buying back in. Uh, so yeah, Russ is just going hard tonight. All right, so let's see if Dave seems likely yeah, that he would three bet. Yeah, you're always three betting there. Uh, unfortunately, he's not getting any action from Oliver at this time, but. I'm not in the booth. I can't. My outlet is not as I can't wait for this. Maybe we'll see a, a light five bit from Oliver. Who knows? It seems unlikely. I, Oliver seems like yeah a, a stew and then fold. Uh, but I mean, I think he knows that we you know what's going on. I think he's capable. I think he's very likely to fold, but I don't think he's just purely posturing. We see Dave. Dave put on sunglasses. 
Yeah, I think we're we're, we're I think we're seeing a five bet right now. Two forty. <laughs> Now it's interesting to see what Dave is going to do yeah, here. Yeah, they're so deep. I wouldn't be surprised if Dave just elects to call. I mean, I don't think you do anything but call. Yeah. You know, like he know he's seen that Oliver has three bet light, but he's never seen a five bet. Um, I think even if he thinks Oliver might be able to do it, he's also think a large part of his range is you know aces and kings here. Uh, now is this is this a five bet or a four bet? This is a. Didn't it go twenty sixty and now two forty? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a very large four bit. It's a four bit. My bad. Well, we haven't seen Alpha four bit either. Um, no. So let's think. So they both have about thirty dollars behind. So I mean, Dave should be calling with all of his pocket pairs here. He has pure odds to set mine. I don't. I think if you know, there's a bunch of low cards. He's not just gonna fold the flop. But I don't really see much value in raising. That's kind of like a raise where you're at where. You're yeah. basically only going to get six bet by hands that have you crushed, and you might get his random bluff spazzes like this to fold. Yeah, so uh, Kirby at IHOP, 3K is $30. Mm -hmm. uh, we're playing two five cent, and you got to divide by 100. So, I, yeah, Dave should never be folding this hand. You should be calling with pocket deuces. Uh, oh. Oh. Uh, bad fold, Dave. Yeah. Sorry, man. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> bluff works out from Oliver. Yeah, you got You got to know everyone's stack size here because they're, you know, they're absurdly deep. They're six hundred big blinds deep. Like you can, in position, you can get away with so much more when you're playing this deep. Yeah, look right there. I mean, you could arguably call with suited connectors there if you think you'll be able to outplay him sometimes, which I think is true. Yeah. Yeah, this is. I think Dave's going to be disappointed in that in that fold later. Yeah. Let's let's look at him. Does he does he look happy or like he's regretting it? I don't know. Doesn't look happy. <laughs> no, I, I think happiness is probably not one of the emotions he's experiencing. Happy right there. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I mean, we've already we've we've discussed why it's a bad fold. What do you think about the uh, the four bet itself? I mean, the four bet itself from Oliver. Yeah. I mean. Again, he he picked a, he didn't pick a hand with any blockers or anything, but he's noticed that Dave has been very active in position in the same way that like I've kind of taught the class and that he's really internalized. And I think he thought like Dave has a correctly wide range on the button, and that maybe he'd be getting a lot of credit. He'd be given a lot of credit given it's his first four bet, um, and has had Oliver has had the good several times tonight. So. Uh, I think given the metagame stuff, I think it's a fine, fine four bet. Yeah. <laughs> With the, uh, I mean, metagame considerations, I agree, but I think you can wait. Uh, I would just want to pick a slightly uh, better hand, you know, a suited hand, mm -hmm. or a hand with some blockers. I think... You know, the, a connecting hand, sure, there's there's something to be said for that, but if if you're only going to be making that play, you know, a certain percentage of the time, even if you have this intuition, uh, that's not the hand I would have chosen. Of course, yeah. But I, I agree that, you know, the, the intuition is, is fine. Uh, so here we see Sam limp ace-king. Maybe with thoughts of limp re-raising, but now there's a three bet, so I think we're likely to just see a call. Uh, but nope. And now Dave doesn't have it this time, so I, I don't think he's going to be getting out of line. Yeah. A little disappointing to, you know, have to fold two three bets in a row. Mm. And and you're sort of looking at this like, well, if I folded queens, like. Can I really call Queen Eight? And he shouldn't. No, I mean there, there's no option but fold here. He's just probably a little frustrated from the previous oh. previous hand. Yeah, it's really awkward sizing, you know. Like he can't. It's hard to if he were thinking of uh, five betting light. It's hard to make a five bet that isn't pot committing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
I feel like you could make you could this is actually a sizing where you could five bet uh and get away from it. So l l let's say he makes it what like six hundred there? Mm hmm Then he would Oh have sorry, how much does Sam have? He has one point two behind. I'm sorry, I was I'm still in the last hand where yeah. it was three K beat. Yeah. Wow. No, yeah, so no, he's, I agree. he's getting like Yeah, it's a committing five bet. Yeah. Yeah, you you remember that lesson about committing five bets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, topic topic eight. You know, five betting. Yeah. You know, interestingly, Dave and I were talking earlier about. You know, he was saying like, "What do what do I do when I'm playing someone like you who is gonna." Three bet a lot in position. You know, it's a really hard thing to deal with. Uh, and I said, you know, you just have to start. You have to be open to four betting uh, light. And somewhat ironically, uh, he's he's fallen victim to just that. Yeah. Although he didn't have the type of hand that you know you might be targeting with a light four bet. Yeah. And 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 when light four betting comes into play, you know, light light five betting also comes into play. Yeah. No, I mean you definitely can't combat a good player raising, you know, th three betting preflop in position by calling most of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, against good players, it's good to have a polarized, um, you know, three, four, five bet range. Who? So we see we got some middle pair, got gut shot to the nuts, got some top pair. Russ is betting ten. So we're gonna see a value raise from Dave here. Uh, yeah. Fold. Ari's gonna fold, and Sam's gonna fold, and I don't see Russ getting away from it on the flop. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't bet ten and a ninety to fold to another fifty. Yeah. Uh, the real Allegi. This is five and L, but with deep stacks actually. So divide divide the numbers on the screen by a hundred. Two uh two five cent NL to yes. be clear. Uh yeah, this is a we've we've said this a lot uh throughout the past couple of hours, so we'll keep it quick. But this is a poker fast top eyes act. So these are students playing two five cent. Uh, thank you for tuning in though to catch the last uh forty minutes or so of the broadcast. Uh you know, Zach and I are guests here. We're really having a good time and excited to be here. Um all right, let's see. Oh my god. Okay. So Dave, Dave makes another small bet. I like that a lot. Yeah, I might go a tiny bit bigger, but I, I, I like really kind of targeting, you know, draws and worse kings. Like, he doesn't have a great kicker, you know? So, mm -hmm. I'm. it's going to be interesting to see if Dave goes for three streets here. I think he likely will, and I'm curious to see what sizing he'll use. I'd probably... Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd go above 100 again. You know, I... I probably I don't know if I would go for another street of value. There's not very many kings that are worse. Yeah, but also Russ, you know, you saw him here called two shoots of ace high. Like you could have a pair of sevens or eights here. You could you could have any of the worst kings. Yeah, I think the sizing is too big for the type of range we're targeting. But I yeah, I definitely like a bet there against no, I, the way Russ is playing. I guess if you're talking about a bet of about you know a hundred into five five hundred. Line into 500 into 300, 350. 350. Yeah. I, just, I don't know if I agree. The fact that, you know, Russ folds King 9 there, I think, is definitely supporting, you know, but I, I, it's That's the, the sizing, though. You know, I, I think Russ, we've seen in the past, can get pretty sticky when he thinks something is up. Yeah. Uh, and he's capable of having very bad kings in his range there. I know, but a lot of those even worse kings are two pair hands by now. Yeah. And you know, I don't I don't see Russell playing too many king dues, king threes. No, no, no. But I think he has a lot of sevens and eights there. So when when I'm value targeting there, I'm more value targeting a seven or an eight than a king. But I still think we can get called. Uh, by you know Russ's exact hand and a king six or a king five. Well, king five is a two pair. Oh, it's yeah. 
That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Mm, I have to think about that. Yeah. I'm it's, not, it's close. Yeah. I, you know. I mean, I think, you know, if you feel like all sevens and all eights are going to call, you know, a bet of 100 there, then sure. But if, if they're not. Then, oh, totally. Or if, if not a very large percentage of them, then it's definitely just a check back. Well, and it also depends on how passively you think Russ is going to play you know, better hands. Yeah. I don't think he's going to play them particularly passive. And I also don't... When I said 100 is like the biggest sizing I would use, I wasn't necessarily married to making it 100, you know? Mm-hmm. I think... 50? 75? Yeah, maybe I would go like 75 or 70 again. Yeah. So Poker Kitty agrees with me, Jack, so... You know, <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Uh, Ari raising 25 on that's the button. John. Oh, that's John? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah. Take uh, that Take that with some serious weight there. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the action. Ari raised it on the button. I like, I think it was a 3-bet. Yeah, I like the light 3-bet there. Um, definitely I'd go bigger sizing. Some bets out with top pair. Mm, again, I don't, I don't necessarily love the donk bet. And yeah, there's been a lot of donking with top hair type hands in this game. Yeah, that's for disclaimer. I've like definitely definitely advised yeah. against that. <laughs> yeah, under understanding uh, <laughs> knowing your strategy, I I've been surprised at some of the tendencies. I and mean, I was talking with Dave about how people just uh you know, it shows that there's a little bit of a stubbornness aspect and a little bit oh, of Oh, Ari. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a a pretty river card. So again, Ari timing, you know, going for the insta raise there. <laughs> to, so to the chat, uh, this is two cent, five cent because these are our poker students. In uh, Zach, my friend here, who's commentating with me, Zach is teaching a poker class at Oberlin College. So. <laughs> and sorry for the people that that's answers, heard this yeah. like ten times. Yeah, now. thank you for uh, sticking around with us. Uh, Half an hour left. So yeah, this is interesting. Ari makes a really small raise, giving Sam great odds. But the way Ari's been playing, you know, he's just never bluffing there, and Sam makes the correct fold. Mm -hmm. So Rusty's the short stack now. I don't know if he's going to make that plan to buy on more. We got the two big stacks, Oliver and David, battling it out. Dave has that nice little positional advantage on him. We'll see if they tangle any more in the future. I think uh, Dave's going to be pretty unhappy when he sees that fold with Queens. Yeah, he's going to be unhappy. When he, you know, watching it, hearing her analysis, and then watching himself fold that hand, it's going to be brutal. But you can talk through that with him. Yeah, I just I just hope he's able to get out of bed the next morning, you know. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, I don't, I don't think he's going to be too worried about the uh, financial implications of it. Yeah, I mean, he said he was prepared to to drop almost two buy-ins tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dave, our uh, one of our only players here who's not a uh, poker student, or actually. Dave is a poker student. Uh, he's your poker student. Yeah, we, we talk through hands together, and it's, um, Dave's a great player. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No, I'm, I've been really impressed with his play tonight. I yeah. Mean, th there was the queen's hand, which... I mean, uh, pretty pretty much everything else he did, I, I agree with. You know, I had that quibble about the sizing with the king-10 hand, uh, but, you know... Very solid play by Dave tonight. So Sam bluffing here when checked to in position. It's going to work, but just, yeah. Multi-way yeah, pot against passive play, yeah. Just not going to work enough at the time, and then your diamond draw is likely... Yeah, hopefully you know, hopefully, 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 he'll watch this back and hear us saying this, because it's probably going to... Well, it seems likely that it's going to be negatively reinforced by, you know having it go through yeah yeah i mean th throughout the throughout the class like sam sam has definitely at least 
within like the class games like consistently not followed the advice <laughs> uh and I, and I think in part is because he's had you know some success in his very limited sample of of live poker so far uh using using the strategies that that he kind of came into class with uh but yeah for for all the the reasons we've talked about tonight and that I you know talk about in the class just the the pretty loose play that he does is just just doesn't work uh when you're playing full ring or eight handed just gotta tighten up your ranges a little bit on all streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and his a sort of clear advantage in uh, poker knowledge has not translated with the strips of earnings he could have if he had. Uh, or what I'm saying is his ex his experience has given him an edge in this game over most of the players at the table. Oh yeah. But he he just hasn't been able to capitalize on it because of his range. Yeah. Well, here he shows up with. Something good. Yeah, good, good raise in the cutoff with a pair of sixes. So yeah, we were noted. Uh -huh. Oh, go ahead. So this is a spot here where it's like, oh, it's eight seven. That's not really a hand you want to play. But when you're getting this good odds, you're against a player you feel like you have a skill edge even out of position. Um, and it's only ten more to call. I think I'm personally. Rarely folding in that spot. Yeah, Calling to, sometimes to three betting. Close, to close the action. I mean, it, not Being, three betting, but and have a heads up pot. Yeah. You know, there's those are the situations you're looking for in exploitative live play. And you're fairly deep, you know. You're yeah. about 240 big lines deep. So that's what really pushes me over the edge there to, to make that type of call. Because you feel like, you know, you're going to... You're going to really... Like max maximally exploit the other player for you know the full 240 big lines when you hit a hand or be able to pressure him off when you flop a good draw. Uh, so Kirby at IHOP nittiest two cent five cent game of all time. Um, yeah, it's playing it's playing kind of nitty tonight. Um, I, I definitely don't mind people playing tighter. Uh, you know, having tighter opening ranges and you know not making bad calls, but. We're definitely seeing a little bit of uh, knit knit syndrome post flop, I think. Yeah, a surprising amount of well, pre flop from Dave. Yeah, yeah I've been I all it, the all mm -hmm. the facets. I mean, Dave had some really great pre flop play before coming into the booth. I was really impressed, and he's you no know, nothing. Just in the last few hands, we've seen you know him erring on the side of caution, which you know is not what you'd necessarily expect in a two five game. So here, Oliver, you know, he's raised the majority of his buttons <laughs> in this spot. And given that dynamic, I think it's a clear raise with the ace-jack suited, you know. Mm -hmm. Building a pot up in position with near the top of his range, I think he's likely to get a call by at least Sam. Um, but we'll see what Ari, Ari and Sam do. Yeah. You know, this is one of those spots where it's, you know, it's like 8-7 suited, looks pretty, can flop nice. But it's just a losing play to call that out of position, and it's magnified more when you're when you're this deep. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you do get to the flop this way, with all, you know, Sam has some backdoor straight equity and dry board, so this is a better candidate than your average hand to turn into a bluff. But Sam has already mentally folded the hand based on the way he's touching his cards and. You know, I don't think after he saw that flop, gave consideration to doing something. Yeah, it looks uh, a little bit more ritualistic at that point. Yeah. You know, tap the cards and throw them in the muck. So I'm not sure if Oliver was aware of that, but uh, those are the types of things it's important to look out for in live poker. You know, people give away so many things. Um, so Jason loves yeah. coffee. Yes. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. So we have a little bit of a discrepancy. Yeah. Uh, what the button should be. Yeah, I think interesting talk to talking to people about 
you know, just how the time can really fly when you're playing poker. Uh, Trevor's talking about how the first night he gets to Vegas, worried about getting on, you know, Vegas time, being on the East Coast time here in Ohio, and, you know, plays until 5 in the morning. <laughs> yeah. First yeah. night. I think Been we, there. Yeah. yeah, we know about that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. Can't quite say the same thing about commentating. It's proven to be, uh, you know... Pretty tough. Yeah, it's 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 a difficult job. Uh, kudos uh, to Trevor there, who is the yeah. usual commentator. Mm-hmm. You know, much respect. But you know, Zach, you know, Zach and I. This is a great opportunity for us to be on the show. We just released a podcast mm-hmm. called the Just Hands Poker Podcast, uh, <laughs> and you know, what we do there is we talk through. Uh, Live cash game hands, you know, in as much depth as we can. We go through every decision, talk about you know why we do the things we do and why we don't things that do we don't. And you know we're going to be releasing an episode just one hand, probably about a half hour every Tuesday. We're up on iTunes right now, and I, you know, if if you like, you know, some of the strategy that we've been trying to insert in our commentating, then I think you'd really like the podcast. Uh, the podcast is obviously a little bit more thought out. We have time to talk through our decisions, and we're not focusing on the you know what's at hand and you know interacting with you guys in the chat, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, but th- this gives you an idea of what we're about, and you know, I think these these students who have gone from you know not knowing anything about poker to being able to at times you know play. Uh, good and creative poker, you know, shows the value in coaching, like what Zach offers and like what you can find in our podcast. Yeah, that's a pitch if I've ever heard one. Good yeah, job, we haven't man. plugged we haven't plugged in about an hour, so yeah. I felt like, uh, you know, we had to go with it there. If, uh, yeah. Sorry to anyone who doesn't like ads. I know I know. But. He's really cool. So yeah, kudos to Trevor, by the way, for dealing for three and a half hours straight with no break. Oh my god. Yeah. That's nuts. Uh, and having also sat in a chair for three and a half hours straight, you know, and knowing that he does this every week, I, I see you know, where where the practice comes from. And, you know, these are the fruits of his labor, the ability to do like this. Yeah. We'll tip him. We'll tip him generously. Yeah, except for the one night, it was like the random showed up. And yeah, I mean he is he is pocketing like one or two cents a hand, right? <laughs> no, this is a this is not a game that takes rake. That would make this a an illegal illegal home game. So. Mm-hmm, but you can tip the dealer, or not. Uh, no, you cannot tip the dealer. Oh really? In the in the trade rooms in Vegas, you can tip your dealer. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a different. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, they like are very strict about that because if we were to tip the dealers, even if you know good intentions and everything, it could potentially lead to, you know, this getting shut down. So. Okay. Good intentions, we will Jack. Not be, but, uh, we will not no. be tipping. Uh, but yeah. I, uh, kudos to him. If he ever finds me, I may or may not buy him a drink. Uh, you could consult with Dave, the lawyer, about the legality yeah. of that that drink right there. <laughs> so it looks like Sam straddled. Only to get to know him. And Sam is always calling with the sevens. It's like Dave is, you know, slightly opening up his range in the cutoff with a Jack Eight offsuit. Definitely good at a table like this. Look at. <laughs> So we saw a reason to call that game. Yeah. So a little bit of a loose call from Dave. No, 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 no. No, Dave raised. Oh, okay. And Sam called the straddle. Oh, Sam called the straddle. Yeah. Little, so Sam is donk betting now. Again, bad bet for a lot of reasons. I, I think you're rarely getting called by worse except a draw. I think you're taking a lot of the loss out of his range. Yeah, you're not ahead of many. A lot of draws are not that big. Yeah. So I think Dave, you know, he's been folding to a lot of these donk bets, but I think he's choosing now to to go for it. And I think 
you know, you can see the discomfort on Sam's face. Even if he calls one street, he's going to fold later. Yeah. And that's just another... <laughs> this is just not how you want to act, you know, when your marginal bet gets raised. Yeah. You can see... Dave, I don't think Dave Mines looking pretty cool with himself here. A nice, we nice raise from Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave oh, sort of demonstrating the value in <laughs> opening a wide range and position with the skill edge right, right there. So uh, apparently, straight up, Russ will write them a jingle. Uh, <laughs> looking for a theme song. As a, also as a writer, I'm going to inquire about the. This this theme song and what they're looking for. <laughs> they might have multiple bits. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't think I'll undercut you. <laughs> Maybe I'd, I'd write a, I'd write a song that features Russ on guitar or something. <laughs> kind of like a baseball tonight style intro. <laughs> So who, who in the chat has been here for the whole time? Shout out to you. Enjoy, enjoying this game. Uh, so we got 20 minutes left here. Action's a little slow. If anyone has any questions about anything, our new poker site, uh, questions about the course, what's going on here tonight, uh, we're all yours. Yeah, so unfortunately, there will not be another class. Uh, class has ended today. Um, and I will give them feedback in their, in their finals, but we won't be able to talk about it, which would have been a lot of fun. But, yeah, I feel like you know, I should because otherwise, if you talk to the outworldly in the class, I think that's it. Oh, it looks like things are getting a little lethargic at the table. Yeah. Uh, we, had, we had some... It's it's interesting how that uh, the energy to put in kind of peaks and valleys uh, collectively. Yeah, I mean, and that happens all the time, you know. You yeah. Sort of Let's see if we can end it on a bang. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sam is really chipped up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so we're hearing the first drafts of the Poker on Air theme song <laughs> coming from that angelic voice. Yeah, witness the creative process. <laughs> we got another singer. Goes by Trevor. Sure. Who straddled? <coughs> I don't think someone straddled if Dave made it 20. You know? Yeah. So I think I think Dave yeah made a twenty. So it's a pretty kind of standard one and done against the way India's been playing. Just don't don't fold. So yeah, the way the way she's been playing, I don't I don't know how much Dave has has seen between the booth and and live. It's not a good double barrel spot. Yeah, I think he's probably gonna shut it down here. Yeah, and he's likely gonna get. Well, I don't know. Is it maybe it's a great double barrel spot? She it's it's guaranteed that she has a strong hand, but he also yeah he probably he knows he can probably get her off almost anything. Yep. And he did. Yeah. So I I completely take back what I said. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not just about their range; it's about what they're going to do with that range. And, yeah, and yeah. In, India has shown to be uh, very conservative with her range. Yeah. So good, good play for Dave. Yeah, correctly recognizing that. He also did pick up some equity, but I think against a player like India, that's almost a non-concern there. So yeah, it looks like this is actually the last, the last cash game for the season. They tr they had one planned for this Tuesday, but they couldn't get enough players just due to you know, holidays. 
holiday season and people traveling around. And, uh, so they'll come back sometime in January. And this semester, my class was actually run during the time that uh, Rubber City Poker, the, the catch game they ran, occurred. So I was only able to make it once on the one day we didn't have class. So I look forward to hopefully being able to play more as a participant uh, come come February. Uh, All right, Russ, who has not really had very much to play with tonight. Uh, looks like he's... I mean, he's going to raise going here. Raising chips, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, is that a call? Yeah, I think, you know, he feels a little dejected. <coughs> Losing a bunch of pots. Well, this one will be not super easy. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> so everyone has a pair. This is still not that exciting of a hand, but it's sort of a... Statistically, it's a probable yeah. flop, yeah. yeah. He'll probably take it down here. I don't I know. I see Oliver calling. I I don't. I honestly don't mind a call from Oliver. You yeah, know? I don't mind a call from Oliver either. I he also he has, has the back, backdoor. Yeah, yeah backdoor mm -hmm. not flush draw. But even without the backdoor not flush no, draw. No, the two pair opportunities. And Russ could be you yeah, know leading out be. with a worse four. He called in the small blind. <laughs> oh, the case is one yeah. time. Yeah. Thanks, Poker Kitty. Yeah. Yeah, H Ace on the turn, please. Yeah. So then Ari calls there pretty. Pretty quickly. Just. I don't. Yeah. yeah. Don't like that call from Ari. Well, this puts a uh, a gut shot out for everybody on the. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. And gives Russ the backdoor nut, nut spade draw. Oh, that's true. So we're definitely gonna see another bet from Russ. Actually, Dang. we we never we, know. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we likely will, and we did. Looks like it was twenty five. Yes, yeah, so that that bet's too small. Yeah. I don't like the snap call by Oliver there. Obviously, and, don't and like from the Ari. from Ari. Yeah, it, it might still be a call from Oliver. Um, but yeah, it's never snapping. <laughs> so Russ Let's definitely. See Ari turned his hand into a bluff. Yeah. One time. So, so I, I mean, but but the person, with... the candidate to do this is is Oliver. You know, with the with the blocker to the nuts. So I think with Russ's like smaller and smaller sizing. Relative to the pot, even if it doesn't seem like it uh, to Russ, it's, it's it's a pretty pretty small size out here, uh, less than half pot. So I hope Oliver realizes that his four is never good, but that he could represent a flush and maybe the blocker. Looks, looks like he like just he called. Was... So yeah. Oh, oh yeah, he raised. Yeah. Good for Oliver. So we didn't talk talk much about blockers this semester. Oh, we talked about it briefly. I think he said fold. He said call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a gif right there. Uh, what do you think about that call? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely I don't, don't like the reasons see. why he called. It looks like it was just a call out of frustration. Without much thinking. Um, and honestly, in a multi-way pot when someone else is behind, like, it's pretty rare. Like in a heads-up pot, I like the call a lot better. But with Ari behind, you could easily have a flush. You know. Yeah, I, I, I don't like the call. Yeah. But it's it's you know it's hard to like evaluate decisions like that because I would just never ever get to that spot that yeah. way. So it's it is difficult it's difficult to put myself in, in that situation. But yeah. I would like to think. That, well, I mean, obviously, a fold would have been correct there. Uh, that's a specific scenario, but I think I probably would have folded. And I think I would feel good about it. So Russ is talking some shit about me right here. I couldn't exactly hear what it was. They're, uh, they're making fun of my extra credit policy. Uh, what's your extra credit policy? Um, basically, after fall break, Whenever I really want them to do something, I would offer some extra credit. Uh, but I definitely like the the bluff by Oliver. It's really good. I'm curious to see if he's thinking about blockers there. Uh, so Goonies for life. Uh, yeah, this, thank you for that. 
Yeah. Uh, if you could elaborate on why this fucking sucks, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Um, always curious to get some some good feedback. Hmm. But yeah, definitely, it's it's you know it's lethargic. It's the end of the night, and to all these people's credits, today was the last day of classes. Sure. You know, mm-hmm. we drove for an hour, which is not something Oberlin College students normally do. People yeah. are tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> then again, thank you for sticking around. Yeah, um, stay stay the last ten minutes. We'll be here. So Russ is making a thin value bet here. Sam calling with his gut shot again. I, I don't like a call there. I like kind of playing as a semi bluff. Uh, so an mm-hmm. interesting spot here. People will likely see a check by. Oh, so now Sam decided to donk out. And Russ. Oh, and Russ calls. I think it seems like Russell <laughs> is, is emboldened. Going into station mode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but at the right time. Yeah. Yeah, so that, this is kind of why people become calling stations. You know, they make a series of bad calls that happen to work out in the short term, and then that kind of let's see. Tips with them. I think Sam. Yeah, Sam's checked. Three. Russ bets. <laughs> oh. oh wow, giant over bet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like that bet. For obvious yeah. Uh, yeah. But but I think Russell probably feels pretty good about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, Russell, uh, mildly chipping up. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he bought back in, so I think he's he's only down four dollars now. <laughs> yeah. So definitely the. I'm sure what Russ was thinking was he was making a you know a merge bet with a kind of the the middle of his range and you know. Uh, if it was a bluff. It was a completely terrible yeah. sizing and un- unnecessary bluff, yeah. but. It, yeah. Sometimes things aren't a bluff or value. They're just uh Just a bet. <laughs> yeah. Best not to think about it too much. Yeah. Well, there, then again, yeah. There we are trying to rationalize, like, just uh, <laughs> irras- irrationality. Yeah. But hey, man, he's he's one of your friends. I don't I don't know if I'd. It's kind of mean to say that. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's trying his best out here. I agree. I. I commend him for his participation. Yeah. <laughs> Seven minutes left. Anything can happen. Mm-hmm. Let's see a 1,200 big blind pot between Dave and Oliver. Who knows? It's poker. <laughs> so what we yes. will see is Oliver just raising his button no matter what. Uh, oh, wow. So... Sam knows that he's dominating Oliver and makes a raise call with his 7-3 offsuit. It's definitely getting late into the night, folks. Yeah. Uh, so Oliver flops a flush draw. So let's see if Sam decides to lead out here. So look at that smile. I mean, that smile just always means, like, shit, I missed, <laughs> but I really want to do something. <laughs> and that's – I don't know if you saw the first hand I played when I floated Sam and then raised the turn. Yeah. It's because I saw that smile. <laughs> mm. no, I don't I know. I like that play. Yeah. Oh, and he shows it. Oliver, you got to show here. Now, now is the time to show Oliver. Oh, oh. Oliver. <laughs> yeah, he had a flush draw. It's not even that. I mean, like. I know, but just you know, the game's almost yeah. over. I agree. Of all the times. So maybe that was it. The way Trevor's talking, maybe one more hand, but. Uh, looks like that's it, folks. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in tonight, and for those of you that stuck around for a while, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, one last plug, you know, Zach and I just released a podcast called Just Hands. Uh, our website is justhandspoker.com. Uh, we're going to be releasing. We have one episode out. We'll be on iTunes, and we're going to be releasing one episode a week. Uh, the podcast focuses on uh, live cash game hands. We, you know, look at one hand each episode and we look through each decision point. And we try and, uh, you know, really go into depth and look at all the possible decisions, talk about why we do what we do and, you know, why we wouldn't do the things that we don't do. And I think that it's really a great way to learn uh, and a great way to participate because we'll be taking other people's hands. Uh, you know, 
you can uh, post your hand histories on our website, and we will go over your hand and maybe include it on the podcast or at least start a correspondence. Uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, that again, that's justhandspoker.com. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I'm glad those of you that were entertained were entertained. Hope you also maybe learned a little something. Uh, have a great night. Uh, and this is the last episode of Poker on Air for a while. So happy holidays to those celebrating. And I look forward to seeing you uh, next season for of Rubber City Poker. Uh, yeah, and thank you, to, uh, thank you to Poker on Air for having us. Yeah. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Fun.